Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good day. Good afternoon. Whatever time you decide to listen to this shit. Uh, welcome to the Voices from Behind podcast, the podcast where every week we talk about a film that one of the hosts has given to the other. And sometimes the films are good. Sometimes the films are not so good. <laughs> Most of the times the films are good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your I'm your kind of sick host Evo, and with me is my maybe kind of mm, sick host a little bit the other Evo. The welcome welcome to episode eleven of the podcast. Uh, again, if I sound a bit off, I said last week that my tonsillitis was returning. It has now developed into like a full time, I want to say like chest infection or something or cold. So if I'm very sniffly, if I'm a sniffly boy, and if I'm making weird noises, or if you hear coughing in the background. It's probably me. Okay, sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. Uh, the you all know the format. All f- four of you that listen, the the format is very simple. We talk about what we did over the week, and then we oh, yeah. talk about some of the news, and then we uh, discuss the movie that was given to me last week, which is goes under the name of the Void. And I have a lot of things to say about that. I know, it's so fucking good. It's it so it good. is honestly one of the better sci-fi horror films I've seen. It's not even sci-fi. I, I, well, it's not. It's not. Technically, a little bit. But in any case, sir, I believe it's been a week since last we did this. And you have had a week? Have you? Yes. Have you had and, a it week? Was a, and it was a boring week with nothing special happened. That's a shame. I mean, I, I, I was supposed to go to Manchester today, but I was lazy. I was like, nah, nah, <laughs> nah, 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 I'm going to skip this skip this week. Nah. I hey, you're, really... you're allowed to be lazy. I didn't even catch up on any TV shows or anything. I watched Doom Patrol. Well, it's fine. I yeah. watched the new Deadly Class episode. It's It was interesting. I'll give it that. <laughs> It wasn't helpful I expected. It's a lot of shit's gonna happen. They're setting up for a second season because it's episode nine, so it should be over soon. Okay. So All right. Let's say it's like they're, they're gonna have a thirteen episode arc. And they're setting up things for season two. Like it's, it's fine. Well, I also, I mean, I also caught up on some gaming news f- for some reason. I, I tried to look at some things. The only thing I know is that the battle pass or the season pass for Apex Legends has come out. Okay, uh, so let me start off. You know the game Phoenix Point that I spent uh, spent you. Phoenix like, Point, yeah, the, the 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 one that's made by the guys that made. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's coming uh, to uh, Steam Store one year after its original release. It's, the ter- it's, it's that turn based one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's turn based. It's an XCOM. Yeah, 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 it's an XCOM game. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna come to Steam and GOG one year after its original release for this one year. Okay. It's gonna be on the Epic Store. Oh, really? Yes. Which, which I know many people like was was, was a problem on them. The thing is, the game was kickstarted, and on the Kickstarter, it was specifically said that it's gonna be released on Steam uh, GOG. Which fine at the time, the Epic Game Store didn't exist. Fine. But you literally marketed the game to, that you're gonna have. You can choose which one of the two platforms you can play it on, and now neither of them is gonna get it and on let's release be fair, date. Out of all those GOGs, the best platform. Eh, it's debatable. Absolutely debatable. It, but, it's, you know, it, yeah, it's the only. It's the only one that you can just buy the game and own it straight up. On Steam, you're technically renting the fucker. So. Uh, not to mention, there's like there's a couple of other things. Uh, also, the out, uh, Outer Worlds, which is uh, the Obsidian game uh-huh. that's gonna be the, the spiritual successor of the Fallout Three. Oh, okay. Is yeah, it's also coming to the Epic Game Store. Why though? And people, and people, because. I I won't be speculating. I won't be saying that uh, the Epic Game Store and Tencent are strong arming the competition into choosing their store. Technically, they have a better deal, but this deal comes with a lot of strings attached, including a feature incomplete store and one that's uh, questionable in its uh, practices. All of them. <laughs> I, it, you know, it got hacked twice from Fortnite. Yep. Yep. I know. You know, you know that the subsidiary, the ones that own Epic Games, is Tencent. Yep. Yeah, this looks like a fucking hack job. I've got to say, though, The Outer Worlds looks pretty good. 
Yeah, it's okay. I mean, visually, I've, I've not actually looked at it, looked at any gameplay, but I'm looking at the website. I don't think they have any gameplay much. Yeah, the screenshots are like yeah. impressive looking. I mean, it looks interesting. I'll, I'll give it that. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, it looks like a first-person shooter, and it kind of looks like they've used Unreal Engine. It looks like a modified Bioshock engine. I'll say that. Uh, no, I don't feel no. I, they can't use the Bioshock engine. It's, it's Bioshock the, engine it's is real licensed engine. by Bethesda. No, no. I, I mean, it's Unreal, and it looks quite a bit like mm-hmm. like a heavily modified Bio. There's this one screenshot on the website. Yeah. I'll send you the link now. On the like, it's the very first screenshot. If you scroll down. Yep. and it honestly looks <clears throat> looks like Bioshock Infinite, and if it were in space, well, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I'll 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 I'll, 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 I'll talk about that. We'll talk about this when the game comes out. Yeah, yeah, we, we will. I mean, I I I didn't exa- I actually caught this very late, and I didn't know the game was coming out. I literally didn't know, but from about like yesterday, I learned about the game's existence. Okay, it, I didn't it, know it was it a thing until you told me now, so there you go. Exactly. Which is a failure on them part for marketing it, but actually it, look, it, it reminds me more of No Man's Sly. <laughs> no Man's Sly. <laughs> well, you know, but whatever. I, 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 I want the game to be good. I hope so, because... For the most part, even though they released sh- uh, recent shit that I can't fucking stomach. What did they release? I thought Obsidian was doing all right. Mm, well... About that. Oh. See, I'll, I'm just, I just want to uh, double check this just in case I don't uh, fuck, fuck things up. What's the pills of eternity? Uh, yeah, yeah they did release Pillars 2 and that's gotten great reviews. That's a fucking shit game. Is I it? beat it. I oh. beat it in less than a week. The system was always broken. I was okay with it. But everything else in the game is so fucking bad. It's so, so badly written. Everything is just cancerous. Okay. It's one of those and Divinity, PC... Divinity Original Sin, that, that's that's a pretty good game. Which one? Divinity Original Sin, that's them again. No, that's not them. That's a different one. No, it's Obsidian. Oh, no, wait, no, no, sorry, that's no, Larian. That's it's Larian not. Studios, yeah, my bad. Yeah, Larian just did Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, in which they're spiritual successors of the original developers of... Divinity Sin, I think. The Divinity Original. I see. I see. Uh, Divine Divinity. Wow, right? okay, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever it is, yeah. And also, fucking solid uh, RPGs. And uh, Divinity Original Sin was fucking amazing. And the second one blew my fucking mind. The game yeah. is absolutely amazing. I wish I could run it properly because you can do co-op on it. And it's fucking crazy. We could uh, we could figure something out. We still need to I figure mean, out how to play Blood. So. I mean, I know, but uh, did you pass episode one? Halfway through it, actually. Did you finish uh, Dusk? No, I've not touched Dusk. I've been playing Blood. <laughs> you, you fucking mongoloid! I, Just uh... six hours. Is it six? six... Is, that long? is that how long? Okay, all right. It's. I mean, you're playing on normal, which is basically the bitch out. You do not need to hunt for secrets. You do not need to do much. Even in the later stages of the game, when the game becomes incredibly hard, you're playing on normal. The game is fucking easy. All right, I'll, I'll figure something out. Finish it. Okay, fine. It's, God, Jesus. Like, finish it. Stop diddy darling. Okay, Dad. Okay. Did you see the game I sent you on uh, Facebook? I think I did. Uh, I think it was called Rough. Let me just double check this again. The one, the one and only. Uh, let's see here. We're yeah, Rough Eon of Ruin. Oh yeah, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. Did you not? Did you notice something about the game? No. It's a couple of things actually. No, but I will look at the trailer now. That's not a problem. While we're talking. Oh, does that? Why does that say First, 3D Realms? The book who developed the game. Sorry, yeah, I can't hear you. I think you dropped out. The people who who develop the game is free. Matt, you still can't hear me? Uh, oh, I can hear you now. Go on. Yeah. Uh, the people who develop the game is 3D Realms. All right. You know, I was fucking surprised. I thought they were dead for years now. Oh, it's a build engine game. No, it's a Quake 1 engine. It's a cool <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. I was like... And they literally call themselves necromancers because they are necromancers. It looks it looks pretty good. I mean, for uh, you know, for a Quake One game, 
sort of ship. It ship took some. It looks good. At the end, when they show the case, when they show the uh, last part, yeah. when they, when show the Windows, the usual Windows sign is a Windows ninety five icon. That's good. That's yeah, I, I, that's that, that's meme as fuck. I, I I saw that. I was like, yes, yes, and yes. The memes are on point. Right, so, I mean, there's been a couple of other things, mostly. Uh, you know, there's been rumors about uh, the announcement of uh, Borderlands 3. Yeah, it's, uh, that's been going on for a while, though, hasn't it? They keep they keep going in and out of saying that it's probably going to come out, or it might not come out, but at the end of the day... It's probably going to come out, but the announcement should, should be on the E3. Fuck yeah, you, Randy, you but, suck of shit. But, 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 Borderlands is just the same game regardless. Uh, should I mention that it's probably going to come out on the Epic uh, Games Store? Probably, yeah. Well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, this is Randy Pitchford. Fuck that bastard. Randy! Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> I mean, just sad, sad, sad face. Sad things. times are upon us if Randy Pitchford is going to be announcing games again. No, no, Randy Pitchford. <laughs> I mean, you know his reputation because he did a lot of levels for... Again, especially for uh, Shadow Warrior. Yeah, I know. I, I know his his uh, ego is way too big for him as well. <clears throat> the Shadow Warrior, I mean, especially the Shadow Cliffy Warrior bad. Oh, Cliff, Cliffy B at least has the pedigree to say something, because he <laughs> literally created a real tournament, which was one of the best uh, tournament uh, FPS of all time. Still it, is, yeah. Kinda, but you know, the thing is, he developed the game. Fucking Todd Coward to develop Morrowind 3. They Todd all did Coward. it. Randy Lee Pitchford was a, to me. Uh, Randy Pitchford was a level designer for Shadow Warrior. Okay. There is a trend though. Level started by Randy Pitchford, finished by someone else. That's, that's <laughs> the fucking MO. That's the uh, fucking MO. It's my favorite one. Hey, I made this. No, no, you st- no, Randy. You, no. you started this. You, you didn't. You didn't make it. You only started it. That's just and the levels he did were fucking horrendous. Not granted, surprised. granted, they're not the worst because the Duke Nukem levels are fucking bad. They're literally one of the worst level designs. The I've ever new seen. Duke Nukem, you mean? No, the, the new Duke Nukem 3D. All right, okay. The well, we're not talking about Duke Nukem Forever. What? Who? What's that? I don't know what that game is. You know, the, the level designs in Duke Nukem 3D are some of the most horrendous ones I've ever seen. It's that's just so bad, so I mean, utterly bad. I didn't mind it too much when I played it, but I'm pretty sure if I sit down and play it now, I'll be like, it, "What?" After episode one, where it's the highlight of the whole series, after episode one, it turns into a fucking shit shit fest. Is that the bit it's where you good. go to the moon? Oh, oh those those as well. Because the thing is, most of those levels have this, how should I put it, idiotic conception point <laughs> where. The beginning of the uh, the level and the end of the level are literally situated almost next to each other or the opposed, and All you right. can literally run and get to the end of the level if you have played it before. If not, you're doing this fucking diagonal, the sideways, fucking swirly head movement, and having to uh, face fucking stupid amounts of stuff that make no sense for nothing because you can you just skip that. I think there's like I, most of them are fucking confusing. Sounds and I, I need... rather silly, if you ask me. Just bad overall level design. I mean, this is the '90s, so level design was exactly high. Not every game no, was blood. No, it, it was it was Doom and Blood at that point, so there was good level design and Quake I mean, as yeah, well. So and well, it's so so on the Quake one, so so. I, I mean, mean uh, Quake was very played. vertical for the time, if you think about it. Eh, maybe, but you know, there was also a lot of Heretic, which yep. was pretty good, and Hexen, which was uh, kind of fucking stupid, because it was always the same, uh, hit these 50 fucking switches to progress on the puzzle, and yeah. you hit the switch, you don't know what the, what, whatever the fuck it does, you, you need go to click it, you go, hmm. It says, hmm, one fifteenth of the puzzle was oh, completed. Oh, no. Fuck. <laughs> I need to find A little scavenger off. hunt to just go and look for, like, switches. Great time. And imagine... Yeah, imagine doing this in the 90s where the internet was a popular thing with the household name and guides did not exist. Oh, yeah. So you so you were just stuck having to run into the wall and hope that you fucking figure this shit out. Staring into space, yeah. 
even to this day, I still have trouble finishing Hexen without using a guide. I still have trouble doing it because I can't fucking. It just makes you wonder how people finished it back in the day. Like there wasn't a Nintendo Power for PC. There was, you know, people sharing word of mouth. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I remember that back then you know, a lot of people couldn't finish Doom too. <laughs> they just couldn't figure out how to beat the icon of sin. It took some time. I mean, someone miraculously figured out what the fuck to do, and every, everybody was able to do it. But I, we were, I was legitimately stuck. I couldn't beat them. I couldn't see. I didn't know what the fuck I was supposed to do. <laughs> it, it literally never crossed my mind. I mean, now at that point, I was like, what, seven, eight, maybe nine. And I was like, so. Okay, it, maybe if I kill enough of those spawning bastards, that's not how it goes. You need to go up, shoot two rockets, and oh no, sorry, three rockets, and you win. And you're like, in that small, uh, fiery, squ sorry, rectangular shape above the icon, so that's where you have to aim. Makes no uh, sense. At that point in my life, I, I had a little shitty console, so I didn't get a computer until I was about to, like. You you I missed the glory days. So fourteen. So the thing is, it's like nowadays, this year, apparently there is a resurgence, oh, sorry, mostly lately, that's not this year, lately there's been a resurgence of 90s FPS genre. There, yeah, that's very true. I, I fucking love it. I fucking <laughs> love it. I love it! Old, old, old man, old man Evo is just having all, all of the funds because I'm finally, because I, I think that the 90s FPS uh, times were the best times in FPS. <laughs> you're, now, now you're like, fuck you with your modern games. It's my time. I mean, it's just boring. It's just, it's the same. Even when I played Call of Duty Modern Warfare One and Two, which are the best Modern Warfare, especially they are, two. Yeah. It's no, just I boring. prefer One over Two to be honest. It's fine. It's still good games. One and two are really good games, but they're boring as fuck. It, you're still going down a corridor shooting people. That's yeah, but what it, it is. But it's not fun. It's it's not even challenging anymore. It's just, you know, because a lot of things got scaled down. The movement became uh, slower and more methodical. Uh, the reaction times of the enemies became slower. So it, yep. uh, The only games that you. tried to uh, modernize that and make it work were Doom and the new Wolfenstein. That's literally two games that made it yeah, but the new, but the new Doom, the Doom, and I haven't played the Wolfenstein, so don't get me on this one. I just, I don't want to play the game, especially the second one. No, don't but play the first. The first was really good. I've not played the second one yet. Don't. As far as I know, the second one was a shit show. Oh. As far as I know, maybe you might like it. I, but they they're arena style shooters because especially this is this is my going this thing that caused me the most about the new Doom. And I think I fucking hate the most about it is every time you locked into an arena and stuff just spawns. Yeah. And you and that's just and that bores me. That's like playing Serious Sam. Oh, I want to. Uh, you make me want to play Serious Sam now. I mean, but Serious Sam was more fun than that because Doom ah, doesn't exactly. Yeah, yeah. But Doom that's the point where you exactly, like shit yourself. Uh, the the Doom doesn't exactly cater to this fast movement and overabundance of enemies. Still, it's a it's a good game. It's just it's not it's not Doom. It's good, but it's not it's, it. It's not it's Doom not... to you. It's Doom for the new generation. It's it's the closest you'll ever get with modern game design. I, just, I mean, and and the thing is, it's like after you pass through arena to arena in the same level, we have this, I, I guess, labyrinth style of maybe finding some collectibles just just for the sake of it. Yeah, there's bits uh, like that, yeah. stuff. I, I I don't like that. I mean, to at least keep it. I, if it was because Doom Two, especially Doom Two, had these arena style fights. Yeah, that much is true. Doom Two is more of an arena style mob. Yeah, it's, Doom Two is very. Uh, how do I put it? It's 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 a lot more open than Doom One is. And I and I didn't like it mostly because Doom Two is a fucking shit show when it comes to level design again because the because the interesting levels stopped being interesting and they just started flinging insane amounts of enemies. I think that the moment you go to the refueling factory, you realize that you're literally spending 15 minutes on the level if you're paying it uh, for completion sakes, even more than 15, sometimes half a fucking hour on a yes. level. Just waddling uh, through 300 fucking enemies. I mean, Blood has the same. The thing, but blood is more closed corridors, a lot of traps, a lot of in the open areas are more interesting. And blood explore. is very, <laughs> blood is very. It's basically dusk is blood reimagined in in a way. Yes, they're both very yes. similar in the way they play and the way you move, and even the yes. music's like in places is kind of similar. 
So see, this is why I told you Dusk is amazing because Blood is. I, I told you Blood is is the pinnacle of the FPS genre in the nineties for me personally. It's a, it's not as uh, important as Doom. It it didn't exactly reinvent storytelling like Half Life did, even though Half Life is not a good game. Yeah, yeah it's okay. You you yeah. can act you can add me on this one. It's not a good game. I mean, it's still better than Half Life Two. <laughs> and, I'll, I, and I'll fucking fight you, you fight have you literally, out I've watched you have arguments with people over Half-Life 2 the, the, the game is just a, it's just a tech demo for the source engine that's always what, what it's been the only good level that it had was Ravenholm it's the only level that's, that's a good level nobody yeah, goes the, to Ravenholm yes and that's the only level that was worth playing in the whole fucking game it's just I still feel like the... Portal 2 is a better like tech demo for the source engine Honestly, only for I the fact how the good that game looks. I haven't played the Portal games. You haven't? I I just couldn't uh, bother get Portal Two, and we'll well, play, we'll play through the co-op campaign together. Eh, maybe it's, I'll, re I'll it's think really about good. It. I mean, I, I don't know. I just I have so many better games to finish, Ooh. especially since I'm still doing the post-mortem. I managed to beat the Aqueduct. Okay. By God, it took me fucking two days to do that one. Because <laughs> the aqueduct is... Because you know what the worst enemy in the blood is? No. Water. Water? Yes. Just water? Yes, because when you add the hit scanners into water, they can hit scan you, but you need to see them to hit scan them. Because you use out to aim at this point. Because they can hit scan you from any... Uh, the height... And they literally just hit scan you and take all of your uh, all of your HP in just zero, zero seconds. Is that the uh, the cultists? Yeah, the, they're the only hit scanners. Yeah, in they that have shotguns though, there or something like that. Oh no, 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 those are chain gun ones. Oh, but fear not, my friend. The post mortem one adds the ones that we would test for guns and TNT. Oh, for fun. fuck's sake! Especially the test ones, fun because they do the most damage in the whole game. Literally the most. They did just fucking shred you. Then they're like, fuck you. <laughs> and the TNT cultists have fire, fire, fire resistances, so you need to put two flares and hide. Mostly hide. It's just... It it, it, it was galling. And it, and because I don't usually save scum the whole level. I just save scum occasionally because I'm tired of redoing the same thing constantly. So, so that is that why I don't play Dark Souls? <laughs> Well, no, Dark Souls just bores me. I, I, I don't know, I just never got into the craze of Dark Souls. Different strokes for different folks. I never got into Dark Souls myself, but at some point in time I sort of jumped on it, I guess, when I realized I could run it, and I played it, and I fell in love. And I'm currently I'm... playing through 3, but that's proving to be a bit annoying at the moment, so I've kind of I, I want to I, I want to play Neo. Mostly. I want to play Neo as well. I'm waiting for it to go on sale so I can get it. Because the thing is, is like, Neo is the, the, the darkest soul of Dark Souls. I also I... want to play DMC5, but I'm going to get it on payday. Oh, yeah. Because, okay. So, <gasps> apparently, I was completely and utterly right about the, the, uh, DMC5. We were all right story. about DMC5 story. Come the fuck on. No, no, no. <laughs> No spoilers, I, 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 no spoilers for people that haven't now don't know. I was at about the story from the E3 trailer, because I literally woke up for fun, because I, I let the E3 stream uh, play, and okay. I was sleeping, and at some point I heard uh, that it was apparently the Capcom, Yeah. And I didn't realize it, and I was like, and now, we're proud to announce, and I'm like, and I wake up, and I was like, is it time? And I literally woke up like a fucking <laughs> Undertaker. <laughs> got off like the undertaker like yeah i was like is it is time? it time is it time and i was like proud that it's coming back you know like is it time and then dmc starts playing i was like yes! ah! just, just screaming although i mean i guess you have heard about the michael jackson segment that dante has i've seen that 30 second cutscene. yes it's fucking horrendous and it's... no it's amazing for a few reasons. Itsuno no. used to say, hey, don't make fun of Dante. He's not a gay cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> then he puts on the cowboy hat and does a little Michael Jackson dance. And does I, little I, I, <laughs> noises. And he just, it's, it's, oh. Uh, but, Look, yeah, it's I, a game where you can use a, where you, where you use your motorcycle as a weapon. If you have a motorcycle chain, that you can split in two and it becomes chainsaws. two chainsaws. Yes. So don't question him putting a cowboy hat on and doing Michael Jackson I mean, moves. 
it, it, it just kind of killed the vibe for me. Uh, killed but, uh, the vibe. Have you seen yes. how the cutscenes in that game were, were, when Dante is evolved? Yes, and they and they kind of uh, betray him because I'm pretty sure that Dante would never, under any circumstances, tell Nero of all people that he's fucking useless. No, he <laughs> says no. That that's in the context. No, just, uh, that's in the context of the story. I know, story, I know, though. I know, but it's fucking stupid because he still probably wouldn't say it. He just gonna zone him out without telling him. You just a burden. No, he's he, he's trying to protect him because he later reveals things to Nero that we're not gonna right. say. He, he did the same in the, the DMC four. And he did it in a better way, without even knowing. Yeah, him. no, but in DMC four, he was just a smug fuck. He's grown grown up a bit here because th don't don't forget, this all takes place a after DMC two when he comes back from hell, when you know he's a bit more seasoned, I guess. Uh, I don't know. If, um, to be honest, how the how the fucking story, how the timeline of the DMC, uh, this makes no sense because it has true Mundus should be dead, but in the end of uh, DMC two, Mundus is alive. We yeah, I don't think I don't know, man. The, it's 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 a Japanese game where they kind of do whatever they want in each game, but still trying to like maintain some sort of continuity. Yeah. I mean, the but, continuity is just fucked, fucked beyond really. Oh yeah, uh, nobody cares though. Yeah. I do. It's, it's, it's the best fun. action game of the year period. I don't think any, anything is gonna uh, sorry, beat it. This is the best Latino drama, uh, Latin American drama <laughs> of the fucking year. <laughs> let's be fair. It's always been about one thing and one thing only about this. It's the Sparta Dante drama. Mother, yeah. Father, brother, father. It's always the same shit. It's like these two motherfuckers are always the pivotal role yep. of everything. And if you're living under a rock, congratulations. This is Virgil. No, I, I said, don't, don't, uh, that's what I meant, Bruh. don't spoil it. It's, it's obvious as hell, but don't spoil it. Cause people... His name is V, he reads from his book, and he literally fights like him. I don't he, even understand. He, he doesn't fight, he doesn't fight at all, though. He just, the only thing he, that they can tell that he's Virgil is he has some of the swords at one point, and he says stuff like, I need more, I need to get stronger, and how dare you fight me, or something like that. No, but the thing is, it's like, because... When you think about the style, it's like he always goes in and does one finishing cut. Now he just has things to whittle them down, and he just deals the finishing cut. Yeah, I guess. It, it, it's the same thing. It's just a play on his usual play style. So, I mean, I saw that. I was like, okay, fine. Like, okay, that's, oh, and that's... Oh. But the story has how they tied the, the both characters. So it's pretty good. It made sense, yeah. If you think about it, even Dante catches on to it, so... He's not a total idiot. But, I, no, Dante's never yeah, been an idiot. I don't no, know why people fall. They always play him as one, though. They always play him oh. as, a big, as a big goof pizza boy. Eh, well, no, shooty, shooty, shooty pizza boy. Wait, so, how was your week? My week? I because... went to a Frank Quietly seminar. Frank Quietly is yes, a yes. famous... Yes, yes, yes. You mentioned it last week. How was fa... it? Oh, it was great. It was basically just a little sit-down interview, and he sat down and talked about what comics sort of made him who he is and, you know, influenced his style and stuff. And uh, afterwards, he did a little signing, and I got a couple of things signed, and I gave him my sketchbooks to sign, which he never did, which is fine. I'm not really fussed. But he's like, what's this? I'm like, it's just my new sketchbook for you to sign. He goes, can I have a look through it? I'm like, uh, uh, he goes, I'm going to have to look through it. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, so we went through, and he was like, you know what? That's a lot of style. That's a lot of variety in your style. That's pretty good. And I just... I wanted to take a picture with him and everything, but I was too, like, enamored when he said that. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, nope, no, I'm going to go now. I'm embarrassed now. But I mean, he's a cool dude. I've met him twice now. Like, I met him once at work before, and I met him, you know, this Friday. And I went, hey, I, I've met you before. And he goes, where? I'm like, Caffeine. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. So it was a, that was a good time. Uh, I had a really nice food on the Saturday because we went out with Viara and, you know, everybody else and... Had some pizza. It was good, really good pizza. Went to like like a, how, went to this rock bar. That was pretty good. I like how we were so sad. But like I got good food. I went with friends out, so we got good food. <laughs> no, no. I mean, uh, it's fine. It's I have fine. good food it's regardless. Okay. But yeah, went to this rock bar. Actually, it was pretty good. Uh, and apart from that, I didn't really do much else this week. I've been I've been working mainly. I was off Tuesday, Wednesday, but. I spent both days just procrastinating my fucking ass off. Apart from filming a thing on the on the Tuesday for someone, okay. I, I spent the rest of the time just staring into space because I sort of need the rest. But because I started resting, I got sick. All right, let me just stop. I need to take a short piss break. Be right back. Continue okay. talking. 
I will cut it. Also, the uh, this bar was really good because I literally sat down there. We had some drinks, and it's been a while. But hearing raining blood in a bar is is real. It's a good time because it's Slayer, and you don't you don't expect to hear Slayer in a bar. But there we go, because it's, it's a rock bar. I got to hear uh, heard some Slayer. I heard Death, which I haven't listened to in ages, so I've been listening to quite a bit of that because of that. And I've, I've been I've been learning a song on guitar. I've been learning nothing else matters, and, and people are gonna say, "Oh, that's a bitch, bitch boy." Why, what do you What do you mean you're learning nothing else matters? That's a piss easy song. Well, I'm not great at guitar, and it took me ages to figure out how to actually, you know, get my hands to move on the freaking neck properly. And now that I finally got it, I, uh, you know. I, I've learned how to play the intro part so nothing else matters and I'm talking like the whole intro not just the <laughs> the easy notes but that that feels good it feels good there's progress there and I'm making progress and uh, did I oh I can hear the water flushing this is proper proper ASMR shit but a, apart from that I've not really done much else this week uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that I might have done I had a bunch okay. of pizza from different places okay so what did I miss he didn't miss anything, to be honest. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get to the news. Uh, Shall we? The get to the news. Yeah, let's get to the news. Right. Uh, let me start because why not? You may start. Uh, there is a new. There is a trailer for Stranger Things season three. Yep, I've seen that, but I didn't really include it in the news because I've not even seen the first season. So. Okay, so I'll so how. We won't talk too much about the trailer. It looks like they're finally doing something different, not like season two. And that's that's a step in a good direction, but how it's presented, I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. I will I will wait for the whole season to come out. I'll watch it and I'll uh, say my piece after it's after I finished it. But uh, you know, at least it looks like it's a step in the right direction. Second, and, th- and this is the fucking hilarious one. Last week, literally after we stopped uh-huh. recording. Like 50 minutes later, there was a trailer for a new movie called The Headhunter. Huh. Uh, yes, it it looks like it's a, a reimagining of the 13th Warrior. Shit. Okay. Okay. So the 13th Warrior was a shit, really shit movie, but it's a movie. I that's, like. Uh, so, I like the 13th uh, Warrior. It, it's a shit movie, but so deeply ingrained in, our, in nostalgia for us that we literally can't say anything bad about it. It's. it's Playing a fucking Muslim <laughs> with Vikings next to him, going on a going on a trip in the in America, fighting cannibals, Shut and somehow he's the smart the smartest motherfucker in there for yeah. some reason. And they and they tolerate his ass during the times that that probably won't happen. I know, <laughs> you know, I mean, but but this is after you grow up and you start to realize how absolutely dumb the movie is. It, it makes no sense. So you know. That's just the thing there, but the movie was, well, the, the action scenes weren't anything spectacular about the 34, but like I said, it's, this is the nostalgia thing to it. Uh, we were and, looking at it through rose-tinted glasses that maybe it wouldn't have looked, it probably, it's the same as watching Power Rangers back in the day. You watch it, and you go, oh, that's pretty good, but you watch it again now, and you go, huh, huh, this isn't as good as I remember. <laughs> Okay. Also, there have been uh, camera rolls on Doom from Delhi Villeneuve. Ooh. And I, it's apparently I, being filmed in Budapest, Hungary, and in Jordan. It makes sense. Which, you need the mountains and the yeah and the stuff. I mean, and the horrible wilderness. Yeah. Well. Again, until I see a thingy, a trailer, it's fine. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm reserve judgment until a trailer shows up. Very yeah. True. There is a. Uh, a movie called The Silence, I think, horror movie that's coming to Netflix, and apparently A Quiet Place has ripped this book for some reason. At least that's what it says here. I haven't read the book by Tim Lebon. Tim Lebon. Okay. I hope I pronounced that one right at some point. I mean, I, I still try. It looked fine. Okay. So The Silence. Oh, Stanley, yes. Stanley Tucci. I mean, <laughs> Stanley Tucci is always a class act. Okay, I'll get the IMDb yeah. page going for this. Yes, uh, there's there's also a couple of things. There's a Natalie Portman movie that she goes to space and it's apparently with the director of Fargo. It's called Loose in the Sky. 
Lucy. I have not Lucy seen the trailer. In the Lucy. Lucy in the sky. I I, I just pray that it's not That's gonna a get too song, Lucy. Though, isn't it? Don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't listen to the Beatles. So. Okay, I'll get the. I'll get the uh, what you call it. I'll get the that. I'll put that in the in the news here. Yeah, and here is the one about uh, Stranger Things. Like I said, uh, there's a couple of other things that were announced. I mean, there is a new John Wick trailer. Oh yeah, I, I was literally watching that before we started. I haven't checked it out yet. I'll probably it, do it looks ridiculous. It honestly just looks stupid, and I love it. I'm fine with it. it and there is also silly. one. There is a new K movie coming out called White Chamber. White Chamber. Let's see here. Isn't it, it is. already out though? Maybe. No, it it's, it's uh, oh, no no no. Two thousand nine. Oh. Yeah, it's coming out soon. It's coming out next week. I don't know. I also haven't seen the trailer of this one. I just watched it. I just saw it. It kind of looks like Cube. <laughs> a bit, but then again, it's the UK, the near future. Civil war rages and martial law has been declared by a military government hell bent on squashing the opposition. Really, guys? Okay, <laughs> Is that everything okay, you can do? Great, good job, yeah. Also, I mean, we have a, a poster. For the new Dora the Explorer movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, how bad is it? it doesn't look terrible. It's the same girl from the new Transformers films. She's you know be. you know what this reminds me of? What? The Jungle Book movie poster. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Also, uh, Warner Brothers has announced a new Final Destination. Of course, because those always make money. That's fine. If you just want to watch people get slaughtered, yeah. I mean, I the the original Final Destinations were pretty decent for watching. Yeah. Because for the for the sake of shock and entertainment value, yeah. They had really imaginable deaths in it. Well, yeah, it's the whole. The the fucking, it's just yeah, that's the whole idea. It's just stupid and it's it's kind of silly, which is great. Also, uh, the new Ted Bundy film got a poster starring uh, Zac Efron. Lily, oh yeah, Lily I, Collins, I John Malkovich, all that. It doesn't. It doesn't. Th that's not a bad poster. I watched the trailer. I want to say it looks underwhelming. I've not seen the trailer, but there's a poster, so I'll send you the poster. Okay, in my mind, it's kind of underwhelming. I, it's still gonna be better than the new Charles, Charles Manson movie. I don't know <laughs> what the fuck people are thinking about making these things into uh, movies, serial killers. But oh, hey, well. I'm not the one complaining. Uh, we had a new. We've got a new trailer for the new Tarantino film. Wait, there's a new Tarantino movie. <sighs> Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yes. The only Fuck thing I'll say about that trailer, the one thing that really, really, really impressed me, was the guy they got to play Bruce Lee. Let me find this. It's shit. like I have seen Bruce Lee come to life. That's Again, good. That he looks looks and sounds exactly like him. Oh yeah, it's even on top page one. Yeah, uh, while while you're watching that, uh, I'll also say that Bill. And... Uh, I'm not gonna watch it now. I'm gonna oh, okay. watch it. Bill and Ted Three. It. There's been an announcement, not even Bill a trailer. It's just. Oh a... yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, I remember hearing stuff about what? Bill and Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. No, it's, excellent. it's Bill and Ted Three. Face the music, and it's it's literally just Keanu and oh, I forgot his name, the other guy. It's uh. Oh no, I'm, I feel terrible now. Okay, so in the new movie, there's gonna be Brad Pitt for some kind of reason, Margot Robbie, because why not? Oh, it's Alex Winter, yeah. Sorry, go on, yeah. Fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. Dakota Fanning. Yep. Al Pacino, Tim Roth, our spiritual father. Well, the he's like him and him and. Uh... Uh, him and Kurt Russell of all people and James Marsden yeah they're all, they're they're all great themselves. friends with Tarantino aren't they and they're gonna play themselves oh there's Damien Lewis I fucking love Damien Lewis he's a good one but yeah and Damon, and Damon Harriman this one doesn't look but yeah the that. Bill and Ted announcement is literally just Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter just stood at the Hollywood Ball of Fame just talking about how the film's coming out I I don't know about this one it, it, it feels like it's too late for this I don't Man. care, fingers crossed. 
I do I do hope so cuz I mean like I said I, I want to see Keanu in a big Hollywood production cuz he deserves it he has made his career back from the fucking pit and sure. he has gotten it up and he's doing fucking amazing things and he deserves the credit I know people dislike Keanu as an actor and I know why they dislike him as an actor but come on we've seen fucking worse actors lately he wasn't as bad as people give uh, say that he is. It's one of those. I mean, I think he got too much shit for the Matrix to begin with. Yeah, but that's the Matrix that skyrocketed him into what he is now. So, but you see, he had some really good movies prior to that. True. The one about him coaching. Uh, what was it? The the, the baseball movie? one. I like. Yeah. I like. I like. Quite like the baseball one. I watch it on DMA Plus every day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So do I. It's it's still a good movie it's okay i wouldn't say it's amazing but it's it's still like a very heartwarming sort of heart yes, and, the, and the children were not horrible actors oh no oh now that it's that heartwarming i went and watched the film on monday mm-hmm. i watched a film called the old boys this sounds familiar it's a british film about a bunch of boys in a like a all all boy prep school yeah it, it was good it's very predictable yeah. and it's very you know typical of what you might expect from a film like it but it was really good fun and very heartwarming and it's a very feel-good film and you know i'm not the type to always watch prefer to watch films like this but this one was really good this one reminds me what now that we're on a high dot uh-huh. you, you know the new zealand terrorist attack <sighs> literally the one thing that uh, we were discussing last week about yeah. the, the definition of terrorism yeah Guess what happened? I know about it, yeah, a bunch of... No, 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 guess what happened afterwards? What happened? A Muslim uh, a Muslim set fire on a school was full of children in Holland. For fuck's sake, man. <laughs> guess what? No one fucking talks about it. <laughs> to be honest, the New Zealand shitstorm and the things that be happening there are fucking crazy. Absolutely fucking mental. Because the, the guy is unhinged, the guy literally, I think that the guy debated the whole media on this one. He literally debated everything about the media. From all his mannerisms to all the fucking keywords he said, I think he debated it at this point. And it worked. It worked Jesus, brilliantly. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's get off this theme because I'm getting depressed just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, because fucking media nowadays just yep. why, why bother? Why fucking bother listening to the news? Just one, move on. Yeah, one last thing before we get into the film for this week. Uh, James Gunn has yeah. said that Suicide Squad, the new one that he's making, isn't a sequel. It's going to be a reboot. Fair enough. The first one was a fucking mess. It did make money. I'll it made a it shitload that. of money. It was a commercial success and won an Oscar as well. But it's but it was a critical fucking failure on every account. Yeah, it had, Don't get me wrong, it had some bits in it that were kind of redeemable, but apart from that, the, it was just the, a, an absolute shit the, show. The last fucking act is some of the most confusing stitched together the last minute The whole film bullshit. is stitched together. No, no, because literally to the half of it... The first cool. half hour is kind of entertaining. Yeah, you're like, okay... It's, it's not even the first half characters. hour. It's literally... Up until the third act, where everything comes together and they fight the Enchantress for some fucking reason. After they fight the Enchantress, everything just falls apart. It just falls apart immediately. It makes no sense. It falls it, apart it, halfway it, it, through the Enchantress fight, to be honest. It falls... Even before that, when they revealed that the big baddie is Enchantress all along, you're like, well, that makes no fucking sense. They're like, I thought they were going in to rescue someone, and then they'd rescue Amanda Waller, and you're like, wait, what? Wait, who did they get to play Amanda Waller? Uh, Viola Davis. Yeah, she did an okay job. She, she, yeah, she, she's a good choice. Do you over, the casting what? overall for that film was decent. It was, it was pretty was, cool. Yeah, it was good. I'm not, but apart from the Joker. Honestly, you know who I always pictured Amanda Waller, Waller as? Who? Have you seen The Shield? I think I have. Let me see. The it's a TV series. Shield. Oh, with Michael Chiklis. Yes. I know there's a video game based on that. It's the, most, it's the stupidest shit I've ever seen. But let me see the cast of the Shield, and I'll let you know. Yeah, there was this uh, black detective, elderly lady. Yeah. Yes, I, I always forget her name. She's a really good one. I always fucking forget the name though. Uh, Claudette something or other. Yes, yes, yes. 
CCH Pounder is her name. Yes, exactly. CCH Pounder. <laughs> That's one hell of a name. I, I always yeah, thought I, that I, she... I, I, I can see that. I can see. Oh, and since last week, I, I like I told you, I remembered the meme cast for Mr. Freeze. <sighs> Fucking Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel playing Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Honestly, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen to this closely. Life, yeah. See, Vin Diesel has the structure to pull off the st- the 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 look of Mr. Freeze in the suit. No, but Mr. Uh, Freeze is tall and lanky and kind of skinny. He's not. The suit makes him look big. Yes, but in reality, he's, he kind of looks like me. <laughs> yeah, but if, if he had, but that's fine because he has the pole structure. He he, he can pull it off. Cause, no, because they can't, they can't stimulate the body structure of Mr. Freeze in the suit if they're using a lanky person like the both of us. It's just not possible. It's just not feasible. Granted, uh, the Vin Diesel isn't exactly the tallest of individuals that we know. No, nope, he ain't. Hey, well, the the best one would be H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> oh my! Imagine H.P. Lovecraft playing Mr. Freeze. <laughs> That'd be fucking. He would, he would end himself because he'd be like, "What do you mean I'm playing a German? No, I refuse." <laughs> <laughs> but the my, the like, racism in my bones is too much. <laughs> because, uh, and the thing is, it's like, oh, also, CCH power stands for Carol Christine Hilaria. Fine. That's pretty cool. Uh, that is cool. So, uh, I mean, he, I mean, Vin Diesel could pull it off, because let, let's be fair, in the Fast and the Furious 6, I think it was, not the last one, but the previous one, when he was, he was facing the rock in a uh airplane i don't I mean, remember he was, yeah he was facing and the rock is much taller than he's him. a big he's a big boy yeah. yeah he's a big boy what did you say to me big boy and big boy. He, and he was and he was actually framed as being as tall as the rock which is one of the fucking most funniest things i've seen well it's pretty much the same as uh ben affleck being on slightly higher shoes when they filmed uh batman versus superman to make him look taller than henry cavill to, to, to prove that he's more seasoned and he's bigger. Man, that that's fine. I mean, you you gotta make those things work. It's the uh, same as Tom Cruise wearing extra padding in his shoes every time he's on on set because he's so much shorter than everybody else. I mean, he's what one sixty eight or some shit. He's less than that, I think. Nah, I don't think he was that short. Let me just double check. I also know that they're making Tom the uh, the the, the uh, Top Gun for some reason. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, he's one seventy. Yeah, that's close enough. I'm pretty sure he's less. Eh, maybe. Yo, know, he's almost as tall as me. <laughs> Do you know who I've always imagined to play a decent Amanda Waller? The, the play what? Mr. Freeze? What? No, Amanda Waller. Now that we're yeah, who? Queen Latifah. No, I, I just don't see that one. There was a bit too much sass there, but you never know. But yeah. Too, too much sass. She, she literally turned into this badass female character that DC she would just snap that, at her finger <laughs> yes and she would just snap her finger and uh, throw zingers Batman and Superman because she can because she's a woman yeah. but that's not what Amanda Wall did Amanda Wall was in a position to do it because she was at the top of the fucking secret projects that she was doing she was at the so top she, of everybody everywhere yes so. So, so, so she legitimately was the boss so she could do it not because she was a woman because she's the boss that's she's, the difference Amanda Waller in the comics and in some of the shows and in some of the animated stuff is, is the absolute shit she's just, she's just yep. like imposing as hell even the Excellent. skinny one even the skinny one in the shows in the yep. Arrow show even she's like what? you're you're trying to like trick me? fuck you <laughs> <laughs> fuck you buddy but yeah, Which it reminds me, who who well, actually voices Amanda Ward that's a Suicide Squad? Oh, in the in the films, it's, I think it's the same actress for all all of them. Yeah, no, but uh, was was it? Let's go with Hell to Pay. Um, Vanessa Williams. Okay. Really? I just Vanessa wow. Williams? She looks nothing like her old picture. <laughs> no joke. Oh, it is, a, it is Vanessa Williams. Yeah, no all of them. Oh, hello. I, I, okay. I never pictured this. Okay. Oh, she did libra- the librarians. That's decent. Yeah, shaft. I, I'm surprised. Oh, I know. She looks I know. Nothing who Vanessa like Williams the is. Yeah. But she can pull up, pull the voice off big time. Yeah. That imposing sort of. 
Yes, because she took Black a... Oh, she plays in, in Eraser from 1996 with Arnie. It always comes full circle. <laughs> Come on, get erased. Oh, you know, she's an ugly oh. Betty as well. Big oh, time. Yeah. I... It's amazing. Okay, all right. Uh, but yeah, uh, Suicide Squad, the new one, is going to be a reboot, which is okay. That's fine. I don't really care. As long <laughs> as we get a good film. And also, James Gunn has been rehired for Guardians 3. Well, because you know, Guardians 3, Guardians 3 will have otherwise fail. They would have flopped, yeah, this. because they all, all all said they were going to walk. Of course, because he actually made them into something without... Yeah, because he, without if it wasn't James for Gun. him, we wouldn't have a decent, decent Guardians films at all. We won't, have, we won't have fucking Batista actually doing a good role. He'd probably be stuck doing shit. Well, Batista was the first one to walk. Yes, because he knew exactly who made him. Yep. And that's, that's because he uh, played to his strengths and made oh. him look what he is. Because I... I Honestly, about Batista, I've seen his uh, wrestling career. He's never been to, like this, uh, this amazing character. Give me what the, I want. <laughs> or this amazing wrestler, technically. But he was always enjoyable to watch. It's like one of those things, one of those guys that you do, that you just watch and you're like, I, I, I can tolerate. This you look guy. at him and you go, this guy's having a good time. Therefore, yeah, they, I am having Dave a good could time. Do it. Yeah, Dave could do it. They, Dave uh, got the roles he did in. Uh, uh, in the in the wrestling business, he got them and he made the best of them. Yep, and it works. Now, personally, I'm okay with this. Honestly, though, I think that uh, he branched a bit too late for the movie. It is for the movie because he's old. He's like fifty. Oh well. Uh, he's making bit, money at the end of the day. I think that's the most important thing. I I, th I think that he deserves all the credit that he currently gets because he's yep. a much better actor than some people that branched out of there. I just think <laughs> that he should have done it a bit a little bit earlier, but probably will have become, uh, been the same thing because he also did that movie that I always forget to watch. Ah, uh, the one with uh, from the guys. Oh, what from the Wu Tang Clan guys? Uh, enter the, oh, enter the, the, water, the, yeah. the man with the golden fists or whatever it is. Yeah, something like this. Well, where he do it? Why can't I? Feel? I see it enter the warrior's gate. What? Uh, what it's one. It's something like that. It's the, it's the man with the golden fists, I think. No. No man. No, no. That's man with the iron fist with the Russell oh, Crowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, that's with Russell Crowe. That, uh, that's that is with Batista. Uh, no. Pretty sure it is. Yeah. Okay, let, let's just go like this. Okay, so the, the man so, with the iron fists. Pretty sure Batista is that. Man with the oh, it is Russell Crowe. What the fuck? Yeah, that's that's. This not is it. something else I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is a completely different. Because let's see, I can't find it because there's this "Enter the Warriors Gate," which is the closest one because it kind of fits the timeline as to what's. I think it was twenty. Yeah. By Matthias Hjorne. No, I can't be this one. This one doesn't. This look is. Like so, it. I'm so confused because I I know what you're talking about, and it's like, what am I looking at? Wu, Wu Tang. Clan. Uh, Marshall. And... Arts movies. Quickly look it up before we get to the. Uh, Man with the Iron Fists is on there, but no, this was like newer. Is it? Has it been such a long time? No, but there's one with Batista. No, I know there is. Are we like uh, experiencing like a Baronstein, like the Mandela effect or something? Uh, maybe, but I'm pretty sure he was. Because no. I, I remember watching the. Yeah, no, no, this is it. No, this it is, is the it. man with the artifice. Yep, yep, oh, yep, yeah, yep, there's yep, Batista yep, there with the gold, yep, with the gold. Yeah, bits. okay. It, uh, music by Reza. Yeah, Reza. Well, produced yeah, by Eli Roth. Like, I would have I've never seen it. It's definitely that film, yeah. Yeah, it's been 22. I thought it was 2016. What the fuck? 2016. Oh, well. It, yeah, it, it is the man with the iron fists. But yeah, huh. Batista's in that. He's a man with the golden bits. He's the oh, there's a sequel. What? There's a sequel to this movie? Really? really... No idea, dude. Yeah. 
it's made by different people. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it tests some of the original. I, I'll, I'll watch it at some point because it because lo- it looks so good on the trailer. But apparently, such a long time has passed. I can't I can't fucking remember it. There you go. So, last week you gave myself a film. Yes. Yes. And the film you said, oh, you'll enjoy this. You like Lovecraftian shit. And I said, yes, I do love Lovecraftian shit. I mean, I honestly fucking despise the notion of calling everything Lovecraftian. Because that's not right. Yeah, but it's it's the closest thing people will associate with this. Because they're fucking dipshits. True. But. Because the movie isn't Lovecraftian. The movie is actually directed. But did you get which movie it referenced? Highly. It referenced, well, it referenced Hellraiser quite a bit. Exactly. exactly. Oh my god, it's Hellraiser. No, it's not the Hellraiser. Well, it kind of is with the chase yeah, through the house at the end with the big monster and all that. Yeah, that's from Hellraiser too. That's the shot for shot. No, that, that's uh, the first the one. Second. No, that's the second one. No, it's, a, that's, it's, the, it's, it's the, the, the monster is no, the first one, isn't it? No, it's the second one. This is the, it's second, the second one. one. When the whole monitor, I think it was called, I fucking forgot. Yeah, when, when it, it pops close. out of the basement and it wrecks the whole house. No, no that's because uh, she was in the hospital, I think, and she was going out of the... I think it was called the cube. I can't remember. I, well, what's it called? The cube? Uh, it is the cube, yes. Let's go and, of the cube. And, and it opens the portals to the other dimension. Yeah. You which summoned it, us with the cube. And now you shall pay. This is your and reward. And now you will suffer. Yeah, I, I love no, Razor Man. But the thing is, like, the first three here are really good. I also like the one that's basically a murder mystery. The fourth the fuck... one's pretty good as well. <laughs> No, I like the, the I, li- I like I like more I spe- except the first three. I like the one that's basically like uh, mystery, where he's already that. in the where he's uh, they get back the original one that played. Let me find the name of the original character because I'm fucking Pinhead. idiotic. No, 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 no. Pinhead is a stick point. No, he No, this. but fourth one there's the one of the future that was pretty good as well. No, that was boring as fuck. I like them. Uh, I, I kind of, to be honest with you, I kind of like all the Hellraiser films for what they are, but... They, uh, what is Kirsty? When they bring back Kirsty in the fifth, I think it was the sixth, one of the two. It's not no, the Henry yeah. Cavill one. The Henry Cavill one is pretty fucking garbage. No, it's basically a, a guy relives his life, but it's in a hellish state because he's already in the cube and you realize that, realize that by the end because he's trying to trick uh, Kirsty to get immortality from Pinhead because Pinhead wants Kirsty because she's the one that got away. Yeah. And then you she fucks him over. Because uh, she says, like, I'll, I'll give you free souls in exchange for mine. And he gets him and his two lovers because he's because he's sleeping around a lot. And then uh, the whole movie is basically him reliving the moment until he realizes that this shit's gonna go for the third. It's it's not amazing, but it was fun. Right, so yeah, no, it is uh, it is uh, uh, the Hellraiser is really done. That's yeah. why I'm saying it's not Lovecrafting because uh, this yeah, was not. Yeah, so to but, put it bluntly, sorry. But uh, wait, but the thing I was gonna say is like after the first three movies, they started saying that the Pinhead is basically from Hell and he's like the Warden of Hell, which makes no fucking sense. No, cause... because in the second one, it's a massive exploration about who he was. Or is that the fourth one? The third one, I mean. The third one was he was the father of Kirsty. Yeah, was the no third father. one is where he has like a horrible identity crisis with his human self and his demon self. Yeah, because he's uh, going after his daughter and yeah. she reminds him of who he was. Those are really good scenes, too. by the way, where it's the two of them mm-hmm. just talking in a room. That's that's really cool. But... So and this... then it turns out that the, most of the other people are just uh, like him, uh, people who t- solved the cube, because yep. he solved the cube, yep. and they got turned, they were like the little children, fucking uh, twins. They basically got and... turned into horrific SNL, SNM monsters. Uh, I, <laughs> a lot I of leather, the... a lot of whips, and a lot of piercings and chains. And... Uh, the correct term is Cenobite. Cenobite, yeah, sure. Clive Barker and his dumb terminology. Yeah, hey, Clive Barker had some real good bangers. Yeah, Hellraiser, Ab- that's about it. Abarat, Abarat was also good. Also, Jericho, Abarat, the book, not the game. <laughs> Let's not talk about the bo- the game. We don't talk Let's about the talk game. About... I remember seeing that game, you know, like the initial trailer, and went, oh, this looks nice. And then, then I saw gameplay, like, later on, and went, this doesn't look nice. You know, I have a funny story. I uh, basically played through Jericho, oh, and I remember get, getting to the first part with the World War One trenches i literally died the first time because i didn't know what the fuck was going on there was some mechanic. <laughs> after i died they told me the mechanic that i had to use yeah and i got pissed off and i deleted the game after literally a couple of days later i found out about yahtzee oh uh uh escapist 
Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew before before that, but I never actually... He uh, the escapist or Yahtzee that. guy, the people that are listening, is a... Uh, he's a a meme. He's, a, he's a video reviewer. He reviews video games, and he's been around for a long, long time. A long, long time. Yeah. So, what he, so his video literally referenced the same thing I went through, <laughs> the same way I went through, and he commented, and that made a pretty good impression on me, because, you know, I literally passed through it. I was like, dude... This guy knows what he's doing because I let you pass for This guy knows so what start... he's talking about. Yes, and I started watching him more. I fell off on watching him because I just got bored because he was starting to. Because the, the, he literally gets paid to shit on games. So he's shitting on games just for the sake of shitting on them. Some of them don't deserve That's it. That's the same reason do. why people fell off watching Cinema Sins because at the end of the day, it was 20 minute videos just bitching about a film and looking for things to nitpick just for the sake of comedy, which made it not funny. Yeah, but that's that's always how this done things turns out. Yeah, I mean, I occasionally I'm waiting for cinema sense to do some movies about because some of them are literally just fucking hand tailored for them. Yeah, there are a Did lot they do of films, but and they don't do them. They do other ones that piss me off. I have they done a Geostorm one. I wouldn't be surprised because Geostorm is just one big mistake. No, I watched that. I, I remember me Why and. Why did you actually uh, go and see it? Yes, I know oh. me and Wes went to, to see it. It was so bad. Why did you bother oh watching that film? Why did you give them money? You shouldn't have, you should have seen the trailer and gone, why? No, that, I, I, we exactly went because we knew it was going to be bad. It's like, at every point, we knew it was going to be bad. We never expected it to be this bad. Oh my fucking God. This movie is so bad on so many levels. I mean, I, I could barely fucking stomach the fact that Gerald Butler was playing a fucking scientist to begin with. And he's trying to do an American accent as well. Oh, always. Uh, Let's go with always. Uh, yeah. Right. So, The Void. Yeah. <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, sorry. Pardon me. Is it 2016? 2017? It's one of those. Uh, 2016 uh, is uh, one of the releases. The other one is 2017. I think it's a uh, region based this one because I'm pretty sure it came out I, uh, late 2016 in America and it was released to, uh, late tw uh, middle 2017. Well, no, wait, late 2017 in the, for the rest of the world. Some good okay. shit. Okay, so at the end, it, 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 we're going by initial release. So it's a 2016 film. You won't recognize anybody in it, it's fairly low budget. Actually, yeah, it is low, low budget. It's not the lowest budget ever, because some of the shit they do in that film is fucking impressive. See, this is where I'm going to stop. You know, the person who directed also was the main, the, the main actor in it. He's also the assistant director in literally every big uh, assistant yep. art director. He, uh, he was part of a lot of films. He was part of Cowboys and Aliens and uh, Shape of Water and a lot the of... The Avengers movies. Yep. He's part of a lot of films, but... So he knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. So this film kind of throws you in the middle. That's a good thing. Of something going on. And you don't figure out what the fuck is going on until, I want to say, two-thirds in. Halfway. Not even halfway, because it was an hour. Halfway. It's an hour and a half. And by just before the, the end of the, the hour, you find out what's actually kind of going on and it's very uh it reminds me a lot of the mist in the whole you know a bunch of people are trapped inside a building they can't leave because something outside is stopping them from leaving well at least it didn't have the horrendous ending that the mist had the mist ending punches you in the face so hard yeah but it's 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 a shock value for the sake of shock value. True, but even Stephen King said uh, that he prefers that ending over the ending in the book, or the short story. Yeah. I should say. No, no, no. That's oh, it's fine. a good. I mean, it's a good ending because you don't because yeah. every it makes sense in the context of the mist. But this film basically starts with some guy getting chased out of a house by two other guys. And you go, okay, this is the start of a film. I get it. Oh, I'm gonna. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Gesundheit. Oh, thank you. <sighs> aye, aye, aye. So, then we cut to a policeman. And the policeman is just, you know, he's in, this, he's in his cruiser. He's in the middle of the woods, sort of parked up on a road, talking to somebody going, the other person going, oh, thank you for you know, keeping an eye on the town. You know, thanks a lot, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, thanks. And the guy that was chased before from the previous scene 
pops up onto the road, basically just half dead. And he takes them to the nearest hospital, which where, where his former wife works. And it's it's like a small town, wherever in the U.S. So it's it's typical like everybody knows each other. And he goes into the hospital, and there's this uh, old man with his granddaughter. She's about to give birth. He, obviously, he knows them all. Everybody knows each other, basically. And they get this guy, and they leave him in a room, and there's like another patient somewhere. So, afterwards, I can't even, I kind of don't want to spoil it, because it, it, you know how you said shock value, and how that's yep. like a major component to this film. It's a really major component, because the first time something fucking horrendous happens, you don't exactly expect it. Because you, you, you know you're in for a fucking shocking film. Because, obviously, it's called The Void. You've seen some of the images, promotional stuff. Okay, fine. Cut to the policeman going in the room where I said there was another patient. And one of the ladies, one of the doctors, has stabbed him through the eye with a pair of scissors. And she's currently... And, and, she, and she cray cray. Still stabbing him in the eye several times. By the time the policeman goes, hey, what the fuck are you doing? She turns around, she's carved her own face off. So, basically, there's a lot of flaying of skin in this film. <laughs> so, she she had her, she, she took the skin off her face, and then she carried on taking her skin. Came at him, he shoots her, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, she's dead. Oh, no, everybody's panicking. Oh, he's passed out. So, while he's passed out, he sees these weird visions of things, and what's going on. And, you know, who, what, he wakes up, obviously, goes to throw up. The, uh... Or he throws it before he passes out, actually. Then the doctor man and his wife, or former wife. You know, <laughs> yes, we'll, sort, we'll get to that part. Sort him out. You know, oh, you okay? You know, you make sure you got it, you're you getting better, blah, blah, blah. The other sheriff is here. He's he's tried to phone it in, but you want to phone it in as well. He goes, I'm going to go call it in. He goes outside to, the, to his cruiser, because the phones aren't working, to call in, you know, to, to call in the station. and go, hey, this happened. I need backup. And there is a person outside. And he's wearing a white robe. Kind of KKK-ish, but more of a hood than a pointy hat. With a triangle on the front. By the way, triangles are all over this film. Like, everywhere. Yeah. There's hidden triangles, triangles of visions, blah, blah, all that. And this person obviously attacks the policeman. Stabs him. Policeman fights him off. Gets inside the building. As this is happening, by the way, we cut to the room where the guy got stabbed through the eye. And where the woman got shot, that woman has tentacles growing out of her face. <laughs> because why not? Because, because why, why not? Because why not? Yeah. And then they end up going inside the room, and it's they, what I love. They don't really show the whole monster, but it's some of the most horrific, like body horror, like th- it kind of looks like the uh, the thing, the uh, original thing from nineteen eighty one. But you don't really see it, and I think that's make, that makes it better because you go, what the fuck is that? All, all you hear is the noise it makes. You see tentacles, and you see everybody else's reaction. And you kind of don't want the camera to pan because you're like, I don't want to see this. Like, I, I feel kind of dirty if I have to see this. So, I just fucking... At this point, I'm watching it, I'm going, the fuck is going on? It's like, okay, there's something, some cult thing going on, obviously. But nobody is, clearly, absolutely nobody is aware of, you know, who these people are. Like, I still don't know who's who at this point. Like, I know people's names, but I don't know their relations so much. Then all of a sudden, this fucking thing shows up. <laughs> you know, and, and this fucking thing, and this fucking thing, and this fucking thing. So the two, the, <laughs> and then the two guys from the, pre, from the first scene that were chasing the, the guy that's in the hospital right now, show up as well. And they're like, we fought our way in. We're here to, like... You know, kill this guy because uh, he was part of a cult. And you go, okay, so there is a cult. Okay, I see. Oh, obviously. I mean, to be fair, if you draw parallels with uh, Dusk, the cultists outside literally looked like the cultists in Dusk. They kind of do, yeah, with the triangles. And I mean, it, 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 I'm pretty sure that this is just a coincidence, but still, they're pretty fucking similar. Way too similar. I was like, yeah, also, I, I remember watching it, I was like, 
Heretic. Heretic. This hey. film is a good looking film, by the way. Uh, see, this is the, thing. the thing that mostly drew me to this movie to watch it in the first place is because everything there is practical. Yeah, all the Ever. apart from like obvious CGI, all of the monster. Well, the Actually, the end bit where they're in the in the that new other dimension yeah, but, is all green. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, that's fine. I mean, that's expected to be green screen. You can't exactly no, do this, but it's it, very it, cosmic it, horror ish. This film. Yes, but, and and uh, so. so uh, let me just read read the this because uh, uh, people don't make sense. First of all, Kenneth Walsh is in this movie. He's a big name, Who? say the least. Kenneth Walsh, come on. Is that he the Doctor Man? Yes. All right. Okay. Man. He was in Twin Peaks, say the least, and the dad, played by Daniel Fathers. Daniel I... Fathers plays the father. Yes. <laughs> yes, he was in Snatch. Uh, never but, enjoyed uh, Snatch. No, no, no. But this is the TV series Snatch. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they don't. I mean, they're all they're all good character uh, actors, but and Alan Poole plays the main guy. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Who is also not a small name for majority of reasons. You can look at his IMDb page. I don't want to reiterate <laughs> okay, the things so... that he's done. Uh, so no, no. Uh, the thing is like the directors and the writers are the same, the same people, and uh, Steven Kostansky. Yeah, the second guy, he's uh, the makeup in the makeup department, and, and you he's can doing tell. stuff. Yes, because that's fucking amazing. He did, he did Hannibal stuff for Hannibal. He did stuff for it, <laughs> the new one. And for and Shape of Water. He... No, guess what he's also doing. What? Actually, I don't think he's doing the Shape of Water. He's doing the Leprechaun Returns, the TV movie. The oh. Prosthetics. Oh yeah. Oh. Somehow this. No, I don't think he did for Shape of Water. No, I'm pretty sure one of the directors was involved. No, the, in Shape the, of Water. the second one, uh, the first one, Jeremy Gillespie. Gillespie. Yeah, he was involved with Shape of Water. Yes. Basically, and... both of these guys have a background in monster movies. And oh, artsy, and it, it, yeah. it looks the way they design stuff. It's there is a lot of thought behind it. Oh it's, yeah. And that's what makes it really good. The story. I mean, some of the, the story is really... very. Uh, lack lacking because you, together because the story cool. itself you don't you don't get a lot of it until uh, as I said the hour mark because you literally these two guys Watson obviously barge into the hospital because they've been fighting their way in and the junkie that from the first scene goes oh, no they're here to kill me and the doctor steps in the middle the doctor steps in the middle and goes please everybody calm down and he the, the junkie goes you not you and just stabs him in the neck at this point you're like what? They don't know each other. They clearly don't know each other. Then it turns out the, the whole time that it turns out later on that the doctor's been behind it the whole time. Yeah, which was a pretty weird reveal, but then no, again, it's, after... there's so much foreshadowing now that I think about it because he's always like, I mean, yeah, there you was, know what? But... You know what? Losing a child can do to you. It can make you do horrible things. And you're like, why are you being so ominous, Doctor Man? <laughs> why are you being like this? Then it turns I... out he was in contact with a horrible cosmic entity. That yep. would give his daughter back, but instead of giving his daughter back, they're just horrible monstrosities. Yep. And he's been doing experiments on people, and the whole basement, the whole morgue bit that's supposed to be just a small room is another has another two levels in it, and it's all yeah, just the... horrific experiments. They just refuse to die and are co constantly trying to kill themselves. Yeah, but the thing is, I think that this is part of the other dimension. Yeah. Because because uh, it's opened and it's in there where he does the experiments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is where the portal together, which is it's like a bridging area. Yeah, it's like it's, it's the same as in uh, Hellraisers. Like limbo, yeah. Because uh, in Hellraisers, when you open the cube and you enter the first, part, you're entering the bridging part between the other dimensions. Between hell it's and well, it's not hell. That's the whole point. Technically, it, it's, it's not. But it, you know what it, I mean. It started being called hell in the fourth movie, which is fucking stupid. Because up until that moment, no one even fucking talked about heaven and no. hell. Which is there was no god thing. mentioned anywhere. Yeah. Exactly, because they, because because they, they, they were bridges between different dimensions and different eras. That's the whole point. They're like, they're like in the fourth, let's say fifth dimension, because it's fucking me, it's me, Mior, and they're situated there, and they can move and do whatever the fuck they want. And as long as someone opens uh, the bridge from their dimension, from their timeline to the uh, to the uh, to the Cenobites realm, and they cross <laughs> immediately, because that's how this thing. Goes. Otherwise, they don't like a fucking standby. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, they're a literal calling service and the same thing is kind of implied here but it's not well explained it's the true, problem that's that the have... one problem yeah but the, the thing is though this film unravels in a way where it goes 
batshit insane. Yes. Really early on. And at first, you're like, this is, this is a horror film. I get it. There's cultists outside. What the fuck is that thing? And you go, huh? Okay, they killed the thing. Oh, God, what's going on? Oh, God, they're going to the basement. Oh, God, there's a thing impaling itself on a, on a spike. And you're just looking at it going... Yes, what, thank you, Daddy. Oh, it, it just... If you're not ready for this film to, like, punch you in the face... You won't like it. Well, like I said, talking about uh, horrific images. It, it is one yeah. of the... If, if you're not into body horror or anything like that, do not watch this film. Because there is some horrible, gruesome shit. And even when they show restraint, you're still cringing at the screen. Because it's, it's some of the most horrific sort of... It's it's the thing, okay. There's cer it's certain aspects of the thing, but yep. they've been multiplied by ten. And then it's also certain aspects of Hellraiser, but they've taken some of it away to make room for the thing. And it's it's just, I'm kind of speechless because I really enjoyed this film, I really did. I but I also, after the first time, you know that when the thing attacks the sheriff and they're like killing it and there's pus and blood flying everywhere, I felt like I needed a shower. You knew I, I, I showed you a good one. And yeah. Like, Damn you, you, how do you fight these movies? And I'm like, <laughs> and it's honestly boy. one of the better sort of horror, sort of cerebral. It's very, it's not super cerebral, obviously, because it's a lot of in your face. But a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, you don't get until halfway through, and you go, "Oh, okay." So I mean, there's because they mentioned bits. Oh, oh, the the morgue burned down. Don't worry, we don't go to the morgue now because it's burned down. Okay, then it turns out the do it's, it, it's the doctor's fault because of all the monsters that he's made, and he's been expanding the morgue. And you know, there's there's bits of it where that are kind of confusing because you go, "Uh, that wasn't explained very well." Like I even, mean, the, even the ending the, is confusing. The as ending shit, is ominous and confusing as fuck, but I kind of get it. Also, I mean, the, the doctor keeps boring. saying stuff like Th these entities will give us what we want. Clearly, I I want my daughter back, and I've been trying to get her back, which should have been a red flag in the first place because there were so many shitheads downstairs that you've created to get your daughter back, <laughs> and it's not worked. Maybe he's a desperate man, and somehow yeah. you still persevere to just become basically pinhead without the pins. Just to become well, this horrible. Let me stop you there. Skinless. He's, mo he's mostly close to in Hellraiser one the main bad guy who I literally just. He, he does look that. like the main bad guy before he gets his skin. Yes. And he behaves because he opens the box because he wants immortality. Yeah. That's the whole reason why he we opens the box. We all want immortality, Adam. And, it, was it Adam? I mean, he, it's kind of no, it's kind of switched here because he wants his daughter back. The original guy did it for completely selfish reasons. Yeah. Also, the uh, the um, cop and his former wife, they lost a kid as well. And he keeps promising him that he can bring his kid back. And then, and then she's against it, but he's like, no, 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 no. You're getting it back. But she doesn't get it back because he, uh, he kills her in yep. a way. Because and... basically, this entity is perfectly capable of fucking with your head. Yep. And, and causing he hallucinations him. and bringing up things that basically it knows what you want and it knows how to play to, to that. Because the the other the other guys the two guys from the from the start, their father and son. Yes, which is revealed. Uh, which really is revealed late. at the end, and you don't even realize it because the guy the guy goes, yeah, this guy here with me, he's mute because the all these fuckers killed his family. So he's not saying they killed his family because I'm part of it, and every now and then you see this woman holding a kid covered in blood, and you go, huh. And then it turns out it's been the, this cosmic thing that's been fucking with the father's head, showing him yeah. you know how his wife is dead and it's all his fault, and he sacrifices I mean, himself at the end. I mean that's his redemption arc, but he does yeah. in a way in a way the story is explained that the son, his surviving son, was the one who should have stopped it, but he didn't. Yeah. And his father blames him, but he doesn't. But he understands that he's also he's his fault because he wasn't there, so he's in a really tough spot, which is. Well, uh, well uh, conceived and yep. well executed. Also, that's the that's the yeah, that's the cerebral cerebral part of it. It's the whole. Yeah. 
how how show does this come tell. together? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, but it comes together in the tell. end. Yeah. There's a lot of and things the, in this film that get shown or get mentioned in passing that if you're not paying attention to them, you won't understand what's going on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, 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 that's the good thing. I mean, there is a lot of good and some bad because the first time the, when they shoot, the, when the sheriff, the not the main character, the main sheriff, the, the other sheriff that shows superior, up, yeah, yeah the, his superior gets killed. It's it's choppy and sloppy. It's yeah, a little sloppy, yeah. But, but, but that, <laughs> it makes sense though because it's the first time they've ever seen this fucking thing. And they're all going, yeah. huh? And, you know, that it's the first encounter where everybody's confused. Like, you, you as an audience member are confused. And, you know. Yep. Uh, the the actual characters in the film are confused because it, it's the first time they've ever seen anything like this. The first It's the first time they've ever seen a flesh monster with fucking tentacles coming out of its face. You know, with a big lump on the back. Devouring a man. <laughs> yeah. And it's and that's the thing that uh, it makes a lot of um, uh, the the way it uh, portrays the scenes and everything. I mean, especially in the first part when they realize that the dead bodies that they're around are actually fucking alive and they yep. come alive. Yep, that's pretty well done. It's and the whole the you can you can tell by the way every single character acts. It, you can tell they're growing as characters just by the way they react to things. Because mm-hmm. the cop starts off as very, very. Cowardly. Yeah, he's very, cowardly. he's very cowardly. And by the time they kill the thing for the first time, they kill the uh, the big monster that's at, at the sheriff, he's not cowardly anymore. He's more and, he... and more confident. He, and he's so like, what do you mean my wife's missing? I don't care if she's my former wife. We're going to go get my wife. And he just carries on going forward. He does not stop, which is really what good. Do you mean? What yeah. Do you mean? There's also the part that, uh, I mean, he kills his wife in the end. Yeah, because he he ends Jeez. up because basically the way they've shown the two of them interact before, he doesn't want to really you know be around her. He yeah. doesn't. He he's surprised when she's nice to him when he gets to the station afterwards, because she's a doctor there. Uh, when he gets to the hospital, I mean, he clearly can't let her go. Like apparently, he can tell that they've only broken up recently because obviously they're talking, and he's like, "Why are you being so nice to me?" But. Well, the, you can tell they broke up because of the lost kid, but he clearly cannot let her go in in his head. He clearly, uh, you know, can't stop. I'd say thinking about her or something like that. And the whole notion of "I'll be here for you always," and then he kills her in the end because she's already affected by the entity thing, is him like going, "Yeah, I've I've got to let you go to carry on. Like I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't carry on with this and with everything if I don't let you go." It's a very sad scene. It's it's very it's very well made. That that shot, the initial shot of the reveal that you know she's actually a horrible monstrosity and it's just her head that he sees. Yeah. And he's still like very tender and he's holding her hand, but he just gets the axe and starts chopping her up, and you go, oof, oof. You, you can see the regret in his eyes, and there's barely any words in that scene. She's just like, "Stay here with me," and he goes, "Okay, okay," and then he, he turns around, realizes it's all hallucination, and goes. picks up the axe and just starts shopping and you go oh no oh no like your, your wife had to be turned into a horrible monster for you to let her go Jesus Christ <laughs> but then he gets promised to, to bring her back and he goes I don't want her back I want you you know I want you dead he says to the doctor but then they end up getting back together in the, in the other dimension anyway in the afterlife right so I mean uh, and also at the end where it showed that his wife is next to him that's not his wife that's the doctor. Oh shit! Yeah, because it's the, the <laughs> because two of them go through the portal in the end. Yes, that's, that, that's the, the the most one of them. Because at the end he's in the other dimension and everything's fucked up there. He but pushes. He a, yeah, he, at the end he smacks the doctor and he pushes him through the the triangle hole. Yeah, because it turns out that the pregnant lady that was in there before him, she's part of the cult. Yeah, but she's been part of the cult the whole. The, the, you yeah. know, the the granddaddy. He was such a sweet guy. He did like a bitch. He's such a sweet. You can tell he's like the sweet grandpa of the bunch. He's always nice to everybody. He's always, he's always like practical and pragmatic. And he gets killed. I was sad for. I was sad for like, grandpa. But his granddaughter, she tells us, "Oh, he gave me a reason. I love him. I'll carry his child." Turns out, bitch, you're just nothing more than a conduit for the rebirth of his daughter. Because the, <laughs> the, the, his daughter is obviously a horrible monstrosity that pops out of the, the girl's abdomen, 
and they're still connected to each other, and she just drags yes. this corpse around behind her. Yes, that's what that was. That. But that, again, oh, that, that was the moment where you go, oh, oh, and you oh, can see no. the, in the beginning she's so accepting. She's like, yes, I want to be with you, whatever you know. Yeah, the and then the, the moment the convulsion, the be like, contraction yeah. starts, she's like. Oh no. No, uh, the moment he actually touches her hand and she realizes yeah. what the fuck's gonna happen, she's like, no, no, bitch, it's too late. And, and it's, it's, the, it's the moment she, like... she falls backwards, doesn't she? And then she, it starts, the baby starts kicking and it starts hurting. Yes. And she's like, but beforehand, he, uh, but before the, beforehand, he literally touches her head and apparently she he transmutes what's gonna happen. To oh, her yeah. Because yeah, it yeah, is like yeah. this flash, like exactly what the fuck's going on and what the fuck yeah, she did. Yeah, there's a lot of visions and flashes in this film. Like, I don't wanna, again, there's we're only talking about certain beats of the story. And we're obviously we're spoiling the ever living shit out of it, but well, if, it's, kind of, it's kind of the deal. That's the hot. Oh. It's the deal of the podcast, yeah. But just watch this film because it's. I I would recommend it to anyone. Did you watch the, the work though? Did, did no, 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 no. I didn't. I watched it last night. Uh, it would have been so good if you watched this. Work people like were like <gasps> they're walking and going. Why is this monster stomping on people's heads? I'm like, shh, 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 be silent. <laughs> So, shh, 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 just, just let it go. Shh, just, just let it happen. Let yeah. It happen. So yeah, I, I'd say I had a really good time with this. It's a bit of a, it. I would say it's not slow. It's slow for the first five minutes, and then it just doesn't stop the whole way through. Yep. It does not let you breathe. For, it's not. It's also not super fast paced though. But it still, it still keeps you on the edge of your seat, and it keeps a moderate pace, which yeah. uh, works with the suspense they're trying to. Which build. is refreshing. And yeah, because it's well crafted. It's yep. just it's something about it was lacking the whole time. I don't know what exactly it was. Maybe the music. The story. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The music wasn't really great because they But to be fair, like you don't really need music to make this work. No, I mean, you know you don't even need music at all. But I would have appreciated a more of a cerebral sort of spacey soundtrack, yeah. which I mean, which there were bits of it when you know when you see that when you see the the visions of space and all the blood pumping yeah. and stuff. The bits there, it, it sounds very Blade Runner-y, and that's really cool. But then, apart apart from those bits, the, the soundtrack was just generic, which is a big yeah. Shame. But maybe, but think about like this. You remember the thing, not the original one, the remake, the nineteen eighty two Carpenter one. The Carpenter one, yes, that had a good soundtrack, but that was just the yeah, constant. Yeah, the soundtrack was made by Ennio Morricone. Uh, obviously, anything more Morricone touches is gold. She's just if that guy listen, if that guy says that he can listen, he can see music. I believe it. I believe I that. Believe. Yep. I believe. But that they buy your motherfucker. But it's the same that problem. Because uh, uh, the way he actually made the soundtrack is very synth. Obviously, because it's the Capitol movie, Capitol loves his synth. It's the 80s. It's... Everybody loves the synths. And it's very synthy, but it's so minimalistic. Because it only goes in those really, really the quiet scenes where nothing happens. Yep. Where That's like the point of the soundtrack shot. to the thing, though. It's only part of, it's part of the ambience. It's not really... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this guy that tries, but fails. It's like that's that's the shame. Yeah, the soundtrack was decent in places, but apart from that, it's just not great. And maybe if they worked a little bit more around the story, that'd be fine. Yeah, I maybe the, the story need, just needs like a very slight push in places, because if if you're your regular moviegoer or like a typical idiot that just watches films and goes, and, uh, you won't, <laughs> you, 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 you genu- genuinely won't get this. Yeah, because you need to pay attention. You need to be able to discern facts. And like, choose. obviously, I'm not, I'm not bashing at anyone. Like, no, okay. but this is the problem with the nowadays movie course. Cause, because they go like, watch Avengers and they go, that was complicated. No, but I mean, I take it like this. It's like we have, to, we have divided in the tree two groups. People who overly analyze things. Yeah. And they just sit and I can spot mistakes and I can see discrepancies and I can see stuff and I can make things earlier. So half the, half the things are just not well for me. And on the other hand, there are people who literally everything flies by them. They just want to see cool effects, just yeah. fucking flash shows. They might go big level stuff. Both well, both sides have a valid argument. Sure, I, I want to go and watch and be entertained and be part of the first group. But that's never going to happen because I'm going to always be part of the second group. And people from the first group they're gonna start gradually moving towards our group. Yep. The other way it doesn't work. It just doesn't work because once you go that full analytical vision once, even once, it's just done. I'm just yep. I, I watch movies and I just spot mistakes. I I, I can't help myself. I, I just, yeah, I at this it. point, I've I've always been like that ever since I was a kid, which sounds very pretentious and shit. But I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying it in a way that I'm watching a film. It doesn't take me out of it. 
but in the back of my mind, I'm like, that was that was that door wasn't open in the previous scene. It should, well, been, it should have been open, but it's not open now. What's going on? I mean, if that was the only thing, I mean, there is a more more things that we should be talking no, about. No, it's that type of thing I'm talking about. It's that type yes. of nagging in the back of your head, going, "That is not part of the. That's not a continuity properly." Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But well, the, why yeah. is it in a movie about fucking uh, sp- aliens in space? Yeah. Uh, I have to, I have trouble believing that a guy jumped literally higher than more people would. <laughs> Why? Yeah, Why? Th- this film is a good time. It, yeah, need, it it's not perfect, but for what it is, it's really good. What I'll say is, some of the reviews say that it's very convoluted and it doesn't make sense. It does if you're actually paying some attention to it. I mean, then, I mean, like I said, I mean, we have those key words. It's like it's convoluted. It's a uh, well, give me a couple other of those uh, key words. Confusing, that people are, like... convoluted. No, no, uh... no, 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 not synonyms. Just the the you know the the key words people use to describe stuff that they don't really understand. It's complicated. Yeah. I didn't get it. It's convoluted. Yeah. It, it, no, my favorite no, one no, is no. it just okay. didn't make sense. You're like, what about it didn't make sense? It just didn't make sense. And there, that's all the explanation you get, and you go. No, I mean, was it the story? Was it the pacing? It made no sense. No, I mean, uh, as general, as general, because you know, everybody that types, especially writes shit on like IMDb and uh, the Rotten Tomato, those pseudo analysts, yeah. especially the ones that give uh, some false reviews, they usually use those meme words that. Uh, uh, just easy uh, clickbait stuff oh, it, it, like it's complicated it's com- the, sorry it's convoluted because it sounds better yeah it's like there's there's also like five or six of these keywords that you always uh, gotta find in like 90 percent of the reviews written in these places it's like the story because... doesn't flow right I'm like what <laughs> tell me again how it doesn't do that uh, yeah it's literally, it's literally like a, a, an hour and a half condensed in an hour and a half which part of the story did, uh, didn't happen? It's not like uh, the one with Johnny Depp, where it, the story didn't make any fucking sense. Which one? That's one too many. Uh, no, the one. No, the, the one that you gave me to watch. Uh, Nick of Time. Yeah, Nick of Time. Yeah, Nick of Time is a bit convoluted. Yeah, true. It, it's not convoluted. It's just a fucking mess. That's because the story is a fucking mess. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. It makes sense because it's not written well. But it's written at a time where people didn't have to write properly. Yeah, but uh, again, this film. <laughs> So I think, I think people, the, one of the complaints is that some of the things just weren't explained, but that makes it, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. I it, mean, the, the Im- movie imagine, it, uh... until the very end, it's still a bit of a mystery to all the characters. Well, apart from obviously the doctor, but it's still a bit of a mystery. So you don't have to have it properly explained. All you need to know is there are cultists outside and they're going to kill us. And they all sit in synchronous in synchronicity or they all synchronize their movements, so they all get the knives out at the same time. That's pretty cool. Like, yeah, but the thing there is, was no explanation for the for the for the horns. There were no explanation for the actual lights. At the end of the day, you're going. That doesn't. That shouldn't matter. It's about what these people are going through. Yeah, but horror works best when it's not explained properly that's, because that's it what I mean. a lot. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's a lot for you to explain. I mean, imagine if Lovecraft, even though he wrote at a time where realism was really popular, and he actually went all, all out of his way to explain exactly how uh, Yoxotot looked like, exactly yep. what uh, Dagon, Dagon did. Dagon. Dagon. <laughs> Whatever. Dagon. Exactly how fucking Cthulhu works. It's like exactly what he did. Uh, that, that, that's, what, that's why people yes. nowadays find him so captivating because it's all left to imagination. Yeah, he explains just enough for you to get an idea. He basically goes, idea, do you want to know what this looks like? Fuck you, you can't comprehend it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably the, the first biggest cop-out I've seen in the literature that <laughs> works, that actually works. Yeah, but he, he's the only one that works because every now and then you go, yeah, it looks like a man with uh, tentacles on his face and a uh, dragon... Uh, tattoo on his forehead. He's got, dra- dragon, he's got dragon wings. Well, the rest of them? Fuck you! You can't comprehend that. That's all you can. That's all you can kind of see. That's all you can. That's all your mind can kind of process. The rest is just too much for you to handle. Fuck you. Or, or he goes like, so he uh, he sees this face with with big uh, glinting eyes and uh, uh, and tentacles instead of mouth. Yeah. And he notices the, the the dragon the dragon wings on his back, but the rest of the body he can't see because the, the head is so big that he only sees the head. Yeah. Or or that just that's at him. or that's like the closest thing your mind can make sense of. Like, yes, because he he's like Lovecraft's like it might not even be that. 
But that's what your mind can make it out of because you're so puny and insignificant. And it can barely process the information. And you go, hi, right, calm down. Hi, right, bro. I, I mean, we're still, waiting. Right, we're, still, we're still waiting for the Nick Cage uh, colors of... Uh, colors of madness. Colors of space. Yeah, colors of space. What the fuck? Colors of madness. Colors of space movie. Make it happen, make it happen, make, make it, it happen. Make it happen, make it happen. Right, so do you have any final thoughts? I enjoyed The Void quite a bit. I enjoyed how crazy it got at the end, and I liked many, I want to say 80% of it. Okay. Because, again, the it, it, there's something about it that can't explain the kind of lacks, and that's a, like you said it yourself, basically. But apart from that, it was a really good time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I would watch it again. I would recommend it to anybody that likes horror films. So, what no, movie no would jump you like scares. to watch? Yeah, that's, no uh, jump that's scares. the I forgot about that. No jump scares in this film. It was fucking great for that. Uh, which reminds me, which movie would you like me to watch for next week so I can shit on? You can shit on, sure. Uh, <laughs> right. I had one in mind, but I haven't seen it myself yet, so I can't really get you to watch it. Which one is it? I'm not going to say it because I want to save it. <laughs> I mean, odds are. I mean, what happens if I've seen it before? <laughs> well, it, you know, it only came out recently. Uh, I have a film for the sir. Yes. Ever heard a li- of a little movie picture picture movie called Suspiria? Yes. Which version would you? You're like watching to the watch? remake. Ah, that looks actually pretty good. The 2018 one. Yes. It's a I mean it's fucking a, a gentle remake. I know for a fact that the movie does not they are gentle gentle fucking crazy and it cannot be remade because you don't touch fucking the Argento movies. Argento movies are a fucking treasure. You do not touch an Argento movie. The original movie. Suspiria is one of the most ridiculous, most balls to the wall things I've ever seen. Yep. This one flips it on its head a little bit. I mean kinda I know but that this one with... makes sense a lot and there's so much about it that I love and there's within the first I want to say half an hour there's a really fucked up scene but I actually really really like the new one it's really like honestly you get to watch Tilda Swinton act (laughs) act the ever living fuck out of out of what she's doing so of of course it's Tilda Swinton why am I not surprised why am I not surprised also this one is specifically set in Germany yeah, I know. Right next to the so, Berlin Wall. I know. So, it, I, your movie for next week is the new Suspiria, the remake of Suspiria. I, I, so, last week I said I was going to talk about the... Of how... Uh, right. Yeah, for those of you that don't don't want to listen to uh, History Times with Evo and the other Evo and the two Evos, this week we will quickly go over how Bulgaria Christianized itself back in... But, Technically, the word is baptized. Whatever. We became Christians. 800. The year is 855. Not not 1800. No, 855. No, wait. We got Christianized. Uh, what was later? it 864? Eight, 864. It's 864. What was, what was 855? Uh, wasn't that Ubertak? Became, becomes king? Is that what it is? No, wait. 855. I don't know. 852 is when uh, Boris the first. And we'll get to that. I At the end of the day, it's eight six four, not one eight six four. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I, I get it. All right, so let's begin. At the time, in eight five two, we had that, that Boris is eight hundred fifty two. Eight hundred fifty two. Boris the first became a uh, Khan. At the time, at the time, it's a Khan, but right, but technically, it's a people know yeah, what a Khan f- is. It it the Khan is what a king it's is. Equi- it's an equivalent. It's Those it's only king. us, the uh, some of the uh, Asian populace that had it, and the Aztecs. That's the only three I think that use cons as their main. Wait, rulers. give me a minute. I I need uh, to do. We got fucking Genghis Khan, so you know. Yeah. Uh, no, I need. I uh, translate. Yes, translate. <laughs> Google Translate, please. Translate the whole page. Because I forgot what the. It's a prince. So Knyaz is it's a, a prince. Knyaz is a prince. Yes. Fucking. I, I, I think it's just equivalent because it's not a prince. Right. So 852, Boris the first becomes uh, becomes the Khan at the time. 855 is when uh, Cyril and Metodius got banished. 
from uh, Byzantium. Oh, that's when we got her. Uh, yes, that's when they brought Cyrillic to the whole yes. fucking world and started from Bulgaria. So See, shut the fuck up, Russia. So Boris, the genius, he always wanted to get us baptized for a reason. Because he figured out that uh, because uh, in the Christian-dominated Europe, we will not be taken seriously because yep. we're not Christians. Yep. So he was like, but he did, he but he wanted to create our own version of it for obvious reasons. I'll get to this later. So at five five, they got banished. They got uh, they get uh, a political refugee in Bulgaria. Yep. And Boris says like, oh, she get this new uh, this, uh, this new alphabet here. Yeah, yeah. we'll use it. We'll can use it. Us? Yeah, can you teach us? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So, so uh, then, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Eight five five, you get her own. Yes, and alphabet. this space, uh, this space, what? So the, because at this point we're, we're, we're using like old school runic language at this point. Yes, and he was like, "So we accept <laughs> this relic as a alphabet. That's fine. Yep, that's all right. eight six. Sorry, and from two, there it moves further north to Russia, but that's like later on. No, it doesn't matter because uh, afterwards, after the uh students the primary one the primary students which i think were like seven of them i can't remember i don't want to go it, it is up. it is seven altogether i think all of uh serial Mesodians yeah they, is, they, uh... they, the, they send them off and they spread them across the world to spread yep. the Cyrillic language so yeah that, that, that's how the Cyrillic language got spread yep so at through time, bulgaria <laughs> well through the students of uh Cyril, because they developed they actually developed the cyrillic language for the byzantine empire to use instead of the greek one but they got yeah. thrown but out they because told of them to the fuck off. yes <laughs> and it was like so boris didn't want didn't want first of all to have our liturgies in greek yep so he wanted our own language because he didn't like the greeks much fair enough nobody likes the like the greeks much at that point jesus I don't think that at any point any, anyone actually... Likes <laughs> Nobody that. likes the Greeks still. <laughs> I, I'm i sorry, my Greek friends. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> no one actually liked you that much. So, you know, and 862 started his offensive of trying to get uh, the Byzantine Empire to baptize us and recognize us yep. as, a, as, a, as a Christian state. They refused, mostly because the, uh, Boris wanted to have our own church our liturgies in our own language and have our own head of the church who is independent of the Byzantine one. The Byzantines did not like it. Most because, yep. first of all, we were barbarians. Mm. Second of all, Still. it's kind of uh, ludicrous. So they was like, okay, so you don't want us to be Orthodox? Fine. So he sent letters towards the Catholic Church in Rome. But he was smart. He knew that they would also never agree. Yep. So his offensive was fucking genius. He was like, I'll pretend we'll become Catholics <laughs> and the pastors Byzantines have no choice to accept us. So he sent off them like, but you have to do everything in Latin. You have to recognize us. You have to restructure every part of your political system so that, because at this point, uh, the, Roman, uh, the, the Roman Empire was, uh, so was a this, uh, Papo Caesarism. Yeah. Which basically states that the church is higher than the political the body. It's higher than the uh, yes. So the church has in charge. A, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's not gonna work out. How do you think Rome from... got fucked up so much over the years? Well, yeah, that's because you know. So, you know, and he also sent notice of this to the Byzantine Empire. He's like, so, I have to I have spoken to Rome, fuckers. <laughs> And they have agreed, but he tells them that they agreed to his terms, yep. which is not true. <laughs> they would never agree to that. And the Byzantine was like, "Motherfucker, we can't have a Catholic fucking run country in the middle of fucking Orthodox uh, Orthodox land. Literally in the middle of it, you're gonna have so, an Orthodox sorry and to, a large Orthodox." Sorry to, to interrupt yep. you. This is breaking news. Yes. This is from two hours ago. It yep. just showed up on my Reddit. A petition is currently being held. About what? Tell me it's about Brexit. It's a cancel Brexit. <sighs> Do you want to guess how many signatures it's passed? In two hours? I'd say 50,000? Million. Fine. It's passed a million sign A petition calling for Theresa May to cancel Brexit by revoking Article Okay, 50. so let's be fair. After the official vote of Brexit, it was rat it was uh, passed to, to serve for a second vote ratified that should held a second vote that yeah. never got held. Parliament's which is petitions committee tweeted that there are... The rate of signatures was the highest 
the site has ever had to deal with after the website crashed. Yes, because the original, because they should have been a revolt that never, never got happened, and yep. there was a clear breach of uh, so many laws, international ones. Yeah, and... but they're they're kind of breaching the law by going. We want to revoke what we started to <sighs> to want because we're a bunch of babies that don't know what what they want. So, uh, but you know, there is one bad thing that if Brexit gets cancelled, you know what's going to happen? What? Nigel Farage is going to come back to politics. He's not though, because. No, oh yeah, said, because he's gonna come back to like to, to like taunt Bre people. Because if Brexit fails, he's gonna come back to make Brexit happen again and then leave again. Because that's not fishy at all. Because you know him and his fuck buddies with Boris and the other stooges didn't fuck up England bad enough. But figure, people figured it out way too late. Obviously. Oh yeah, Be because people would rather listen than actually you know do anything for themselves here. Uh, anyway, uh, right, so, so eight eight sixty two. Yes, I Game of Thrones the, 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 shit is happening in Bulgaria. Yeah, so and and the, Byzant uh, the Byzantines are like, we can't have a Catholic run state in the middle of it, in the large one at that point, because we had most of Romania. Yeah, because the, my, the Byzantines are going, correct. wait, are you no, no, telling no, no, no. me we're gonna get Catholics right above us? No, 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 this no, can't no, happen. No, no. We're not. This is this isn't allowed. And they're like, so you want to, okay, okay, get it. So they baptized us, they gave us our own church. They gave us the ortho, own... basically we became orthodox instead of Catholics. And at this point, Rome's going, what the fuck is going on? Wait, they were like, what do you, ah! what, what do you mean you're orthodox? I thought you wanted to be Catholic. And the Boris goes, nah. No, nah, fam, it, 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 it's, just, it's, just, it's just a joke, man. It's just like, a joke. It was got all a prank. sham. Get shield, bitches. Get sham, boy. <laughs> And the, and the funniest thing is that this is the, by the end of uh, Boris's reign. This is like 876? Yeah, I think. Like that. And he he steps down. He actually steps down from his rulership. And he uh, firstborn son Vladimir, I think it was. Because after, after we get uh, baptized, we start adopting uh, Christian standard names. So, Khan Boris becomes Knyaz Boris or Prince yeah. Boris. Yeah. After that, we have they have Tsars, which is kings. In just a different language, but it, it equates to the same thing. Yeah. Get yeah. This shit. Well, there's Tsars. It's the same thing, yeah. Well, not exactly. Because kings, kings are Krale, so it's, a, you know. Technically... Uh, no, it's it, it equates. It's not the same, but it equates. Equates to it. Okay, fair enough. Yes, because uh, it's different. Because we uh, come to an agreement with Byzantine uh, with the Byzantine Empire that we won't have emperors. No emperors. That's, that's, no. Yeah, that, that's 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 the thing. Because only they can have emperors. And we're like, fine, fuck it. We just they're an we empire. Just we weren't really an empire at that point. No, we were empire afterwards. <laughs> 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 yeah. And you know, after that. His firstborn son, I think his name was Vladimir, was some weird shit. I don't know. Wait, wait. It's been wait, a while since I've actually it's... read any Bulgarian history, so. Yeah, I always forget that name. I, yeah, I think yeah, his name is Vladimir. So this motherfucker decides that he's going to do all of his father's work and he's going to uh, bring us back to our heretical roots. Bring our us back to, bring us back to Paganistic. worshipping Paganism. Tangra yeah, Paganism. and all the other gods, gods yeah. And the the reason why it was also so important for us to accept Christianity as a single faith, because at that time in Bulgaria lived three major tribes: the yep. pre-Bulgarians who worshipped Tangra and the rest of the, the gods, the Slavs who uh, worshipped Perun and the rest of the gods, and the Thracians which who, to, who, to worship a third set of gods. So you know, you literally have three different uh, sets yeah, of people. Yeah, we went we three. went all under Christianity, so we were actually so we could be taken seriously. And, and after having the... double crossed two major empires, we were actually taken seriously because we fucked them both up. <laughs> and uh, not to mention the fact that, I mean, this also brought unity to the whole yep. nation. The, every so everybody actually time. started getting along within a country that was because we we're all Christians now, so we yeah. all worship the same shit. It wasn't like, you know, oh, this week I can't work because I'm worship because it's uh, this one and this one yeah. is that that one. So... People actually, you know, the, Bulgaria actually started to gain traction and the way it was developing because everybody started working, you know, doing yeah. the same shit. So Boris with that to, to a monastery and Vladimir wanted to bring us back to paganism. And yeah. Boris got wind of this. Yep. So he re retired. So he went back, got an army. <laughs> he literally went went away from his mom, got an army, got it together. He found his son, beat him, 
in the open warfare, blinded him, yep. had his wife shaven and sent to a monastery for the rest of her life, yep. and retired again. Yep. 1895, when Simeon was fighting the Majas, and this is uh, Simeon the first, uh-huh. the first king, and he is the 895, most... 895, you mean. Yeah, eight, what did I say? 18. Oh, sorry. No, we, we were under Turkish yoke at that point. So. Yeah, uh, 895. Wait, yeah. no, 8, 1895, we were free. No, we were free, sorry. So, 895, he comes out again of monastery yep. to help his son Simeon fight the Majas. Yep. And this, this and... fucker, by the way, is like 90 at this point, and he's still like on his horse, fucking slaying people. He doesn't care. He's just, he's, he's just boss. He's just, yep. I mean, this is literally the game. We I do refer to it nowadays to the Great Game of Thrones era because we had Chrome, the guy who literally got the Byzantine Empire skull and made it into a cup. Yep. We had uh, Pre- uh, Presian. Wait. Wait. Yeah, huh? Presian. I think, I think it was Presian. Kesar Presian. I couldn't tell you. I, again, I, I need to like get a proper refresher on this. Uh, give me a second. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, it's Presian. Okay. 8, 8, 852. 836, 852. Who single-handedly, and he was uh, the pre- predecessor of Boris, stopped the first attempt by the Ottomans to invade Europe, single-handedly saved the whole fucking Europe of this shit, and to the point that the Byzantines gave him uh, the title of Kesar, which is the second after the Emperor, as a uh, 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 as a recognition of his work, because they were fucked, because literally whole of Europe was fucked, and this motherfucker with like less than the less of the uh, less of the th- with like ten uh, percent uh, of the actual Ottoman like army, yeah. Yeah, he literally stopped them. He saved all of Europe from forgetting the shit that would happen literally. But we don't get. We don't get. Ten after centuries that. afterwards. Yeah. And then we never would. He got recognition. Then we have Umbur Tak, the guy who literally built our fucking cities out of fucking nowhere. He just, the guy he who was... created the infrastructure of the country, yeah. We have so many cra- crazy shit happening uh, during this time. And we have uh, obviously Simeon. And this is like the. the Simeon, the guy that goes. All right, the guy, I want the guy this, proposal. and he just takes it. Yeah, and he, at that point, Bul- Bulgaria touched three C, so it touched basically where Greece and Turkey are now, the European part. That was all us. Up to Romania, that was all us, and up to basically the coast where it's uh, Italy on the other side, that was all us. So, yeah, yeah, it was like this is the some crazy shit happened. Yeah, oh, Bulgaria oh, was oh. the shit for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just some... Until there's internal some, turmoil ended, ended up messing us up and not anybody it, else. It's And before that, we had the first... Was it How was it called? The first political... Eh, it was the first issue where we had literally like 10 cards yeah. in the span yeah, it was, of It was years. politics that messed us up at the end of the day. It, wasn't, it, it was it, ourselves that fucked us up, not always other politics. forces. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's always politics with always us. Always politics. Always. Yeah. The the first war, the first no, the first Balkan war, the really fucked up Balkan Balkan war, was uh, bad for the reasons because, literally, and this is not just our fault. This is everyone's fault, and I do mean everyone's fault. The geniuses did not sign any contract about land disputes, so we beat the Turks massively at every front. And then we started warring with each other, trying to get our fucking territories. Because right. we do, it was like every new day, someone. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just it, it's just stupid. We literally fucked ourselves. Right. So, Umurtak is uh, Presian's father, and Boris uh, and Boris is Presian's son, and Umurtak yes. is uh, Krum's son, I think. I think he is. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's Krum. And Krum, and Krum is uh, uh, for the for it's a fucking badass because the motherfucker literally got the, the emperor's skull to yep. drink his wine from, and he was and he was uh, by Kardam and Teleric. It's just yeah. like <sighs> just fucking craziest people, just ridiculous. Yeah, especially Kardam. Kardam did also some massive stuff. 
Yeah. Also, during that during that time, we somehow managed to spawn one of the two biggest heretical movements in Europe. What was that? Uh, the Bogumils. Oh shit! Oh yeah. <laughs> this is how this shit happened. I think this was during the time of Samuel the First, which was, uh, which was also helpful when it come when it came to the, our fall, the first one. Yeah. And wow. the second, the second one, the second one was fucking. Oh. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what matters is we got Christianized by being fuckheads, <laughs> and oh, by yeah, going just... and by basically making our own rules, and going, okay, we want this to happen this way, but we can't get it to happen this way. Maybe if we trick two of the biggest empires in Europe at this point, maybe we can get things to happen our way. Oh, it worked. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh. But so the, the the second one is uh, the, our favorite assholes, the Novistite, uh. made by better than of the, the Novistic people. It's just, I mean, it's an occult thing. Yeah, it's an occult I, thing. It's 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 the fir- it's the start of like cults and people getting converted to cults and just getting their minds brainwashed. And it still goes on today. Yep. Somehow it still goes today. Somehow. It's it's. This hippie-ish, but not exactly hippie. It's like a, a mix between hippies and uh, Scientologists. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I it's, honestly, I've never and it's only one. Bulgaria as well. Oh my god, it sounds like a friend. No, apparently last time Maybe I checked, there's, there's a lot of people from Europe that come t- with the tunnel because uh, they do this yearly travelings to the Seven uh, Rio. Uh, Are you serious? Sea. Yeah, it, it's they where go they to meet. The lakes? Yep, yep. There's seven real lakes that they go to. It's fucking weird. I don't understand. I never really understood it. It still goes on today. Yeah, oh, fuck it. But so you have a movie for next week, yes? Uh yes, the movie was Suspiria. Suspiria, the, remake, the new one. Which, which reminds me, I I forgot who made the remake. I will look now. Yes, no, I. Suspiria. It was Luca Guadagino. Tw- tw- Twenty eighteen. Yeah, Suspiria 2018. Uh, yeah, Luca Guan, Guad, Guadagnino. 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 It's, oh, he also it, made a documentary short, short about Tilda Swinton. I wonder why she was cast. She's a good actress. Yeah, she is. Although she, this movie has Chloe Grace Moretz, who I don't really like. Even though she's an internet darling, uh, unpopular, unpopular opinion, she's overrated as fuck. Doesn't matter. Who... Yeah, but there's also another girl in it that you might know. There's a lot of girls. The whole movie's about girls. Dakota Johnson's in it. Eh. She's the one she... from the Fifty Shades films. And she does really I've... well on this one. I have never watched the movies, and I don't plan to watch it. You're better off. But yeah, no. don't do too much research as who Tilda Swinton plays, by the way. You'd be surprised. I know she plays the, I know she plays the witch, so pretty much... Yeah, but it's all about witches. But no, she plays somebody else in the film, but you won't even tell it's her. Mm. Uh, okay, so is this us? Have you got anything else to add to the podcast? Well, no. No? Not, no, 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 no. I'll probably oh, figure yeah, it out. Oh, I mean, it's yeah. probably going to be like last time. Let me just make a quick check. Uh, no, no. Nothing. Nada. Nada. Oh, wait. Huh? There's a... Uh... Trailer from the Suntance audience. The what? Uh, a movie that wow, it's a Colombian Ecuadorian filmmaker by the name of Alejandro Landes. Okay, what's the film? Uh Monos. Monos. Just I'll leave this here. Monos, 2019. A terrorized American engineer is held captive by teenage guerrilla bandits in South American jungle. They're in the trees, man! They're in the trees! Don't ever, don't ever understand! You weren't there, man! You weren't there, man. Alright. Although, to be honest... The... A lot of films are well sent so they're up shit. Yeah, because it's Sundance. Everybody, everything that well sent as long as it's not American. I mean, I could literally go in the, the, the one-hour movie of people shitting themselves and like, Whoa, this Best is... Best film on Sundance! The thing the sh- is, though... The it, shitting it symbolizes okay. God. Yeah. He's oh. like, look, I mean, this is some fucking Andy Warhol looking motherfuckers. <laughs> I swear to God, this is literally the most overrated artist in existence. I don't like Andy Warhol at all. Yeah. And you know what? Years ago, I went to the BMW Museum. 
Okay. See, BMW have this uh, tradition of having famous artists paint their cars. Yeah. Uh, one of them was Andy Warhol. Yeah. Do you know what he painted? No. A straight yellow line. Oh, seriously? Yep. But, but it's Andy Warhol, so it's artsy. That motherfucker literally did an eight hour movie. Was it six hour movie about the skyscraper in New York, I think? On a, on a full day? Was it just a 24 hour movie? It's just, it's just a, it's so fucking idiotic. And people praised it. I knew people in real life. Friends that said that it was genius. And I was like, <laughs> it's not genius. You're like, get out. You're not friend, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> oh, it was a woman. You, you're not my friend anymore, woman. <laughs> so she was, she, it's one of those make pretend artists. Because, uh, did you see that uh, movie with the, 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 what was it, with the, the artsy one with Jake Gyllenhaal that I told you? I still need to see Velvet Buzzsaw, yeah. Yes, yes. I still need to see it. It literally felt, now thinking about this, after I watched that movie, it felt like she would fit there because it's one of those pretentious assholes. Uh, eh, lo, eh, I love these films. Especially when Jake I Gyllenhaal says that about. you told me to bash your ex-boyfriend's uh, play even though I actually liked it. <laughs> and I did. So I ruined his career because he's a big name artist. So his opinion matters. I don't know why it matters. I, it's never. It, it's one of those things that make no sense because a person literally tells you, oh, his art is shit. And you're like, why is it shit? Uh... Because it just does, does not click. Because like, art. Yeah, shut up. And he plays the role well, but, you know, he just now thinking about it, it just got me to that point. I was like, shit. I, nah, I get it. I get it. All right. I hear it. I will play some music for us now mm -hmm. and send us off into the night. Yes. As we do every week. So I can go take a piss now. Be right back. This has been episode 11. Oh, of the oh. Voice uh, you know my American Gods has a season two. I know. I need to watch it. I need to watch Don't it. Don't watch it. Okay. Don't watch it. Okay. Read the book. Read the book. Okay. This has been book, episode man. eleven. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna stop the stream now. Okay. Bye.